As mayor, I call this meeting of Stanton City Council to order. I note that this meeting is being broadcast over the city's cable channel and streamlined on the city's website so that members of the public may hear our meeting. This meeting is also being recorded. And before I uh, go any further into uh, this notation, it's my understanding that Vice Mayor Robertson has a motion that he would like to make. Madam Mayor, um, I move that Morgan Smith be appointed as acting clerk of council for the recordation of the proceedings of council in its work session and regular meeting of November 12th, 2020, and that she be authorized and directed to sign and execute such documents as are necessary and proper regarding the presence of council members, a quorum, consideration, and voting. Okay, we have a motion on the floor. Is there a second? Madam Mayor. Vice Mayor. Um, <laughs> Councilman Clappy. I'd like to second that. All right. So Vice Mayor Robertson has made the motion. Council Member Clappy is second. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, um, please call the roll. Mayor Oaks. Aye. Vice Mayor Robertson. Aye. Ms. Dole. Aye. Mr. Holmes. Aye. Ms. Darby. Aye. Ms. Mead. Aye. Mr. Claffey. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. All right, with that, I will ask the clerk of council to call the roll for confirmation of those council members present for today's meeting. Vice Mayor Robertson. Aye. Ms. Dole. Aye. Mr. Holmes. Aye. Ms. Darby. Aye. Ms. Mead. Aye. Mr. Claffey. Aye. Mayor Oaks. Aye. All members are present. All right, thank you. I ask the city manager, Steve Rosenberg, note the participation of any city officials or colleagues or anyone else during today's meeting by Zoom or telephone. Uh, Madam Mayor, uh, participating on the Zoom platform are council members Mead and Dull. And uh, during the work session, uh, we have um, individuals who will be joining us for the de public dedication of the yeah. council chambers, including uh, Sheila Davenport, Dave Metz, Bob Stripling, and Ronald Robertson. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Please let me mention that notice reasonable under the circumstances of this meeting has been given to the public contemporaneously with the notice provided to members of city council. In addition to limited public seating in city hall, access to this meeting has been provided to the public by audio feed on the city's cable channel and the city's website. During this work session, as in the past, there will be no opportunity for public comment. Public comment will be received during council's regular meeting, which will begin at 7.30 p.m. Instructions for public comment by telephone can be found on agenda for the regular meeting on council's website at www.ci.stanton.va.us backslash government backslash city council. Also, let me highlight and have reflected in the meeting minutes that this meeting, although being conducted in person, is also being conducted by Zoom with virtual participation by certain members of city council, given the catastrophic nature of the declared emergency and disaster related to COVID-19 outbreak, which is part of the total circumstances makes it impractical or unsafe to assemble in a single location. The meeting is being held consistent with the city council ordinance 2020-04 regarding continuity of government a copy of which can be found online at www.stanton.va.us backslash COGORD 2020-04 as extended by City Council Ordinance Number 2020-24. All right. Now with that said, I um, would like to just remind everyone, uh, if you come into the city council chambers to please um, wear your mask. If uh, you need to use the restroom, please wear your mask. If you'd like to uh, make any statements at the podium, uh, feel free to take your mask off. We do have some sanitizing wipes up there if you uh, care to use them. 
Also with the uh, city council members, if you can please recognize the mayor, the mayor will recognize you uh, to speak. And that takes us to our next item on the agenda, which is item number one, consideration of work session and regular meeting agendas. I'll entertain a motion. Mayor Oaks. Council Member Holmes. I move to approve the uh, work session and agenda as uh, presented. Okay, um, does that include the regular meeting agenda? Yeah, and regular meeting, I'm okay. sorry. All right, thank you. All right, so we have a motion on the floor. Is there a second? I uh, second. Uh, Vice Mayor Robertson has second. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, if the Clerk of Council will please call the roll. Mayor Oaks. Aye. Ms. Mead. Aye. Mr. Holmes. Aye. Vice Mayor Robertson. Aye. Ms. Dull. Aye. Mr. Claffey? Aye. Ms. Darby? Aye. Motion carries. All right, thank you. All right, the next item on the agenda is item number two, a public dedication of Rita S. Wilson Council Chambers. It is with a great honor that tonight we dedicate the uh, City Council Chambers in the name of Rita S. Wilson. I um, have um, some a list of distinguished guests amongst us. And I would like to uh, be able to introduce everyone. <coughs> ah, there we go, found it. Okay, on Zoom call, we have Sheila Davenport, the daughter of Rita Wilson. Uh, on Zoom, we also have former Vice Mayor Dave Metz, former City Manager Bob Stripling, former Vice Mayor Ronald Robertson. Um, we also know him as Dick Robinson. In person, we have with us the former Vice Mayor Opie Kyer. We have former Council Member Bruce Elder. And we have former Mayor John Avoli and former Mayor Lacey King. So thank you everyone for attending. Um, again, this is quite an honor that um, we have the ability to name uh, the beautiful chambers after such a distinguished uh, past council member. On behalf of the city council and the entire city of Stanton, it is my great honor and pleasure to recognize the significant and inspiring contributions of Rita S. Wilson as we dedicate council chambers in her name her legacy of service, advocacy, and leadership on behalf of our city is a shining example of the highest level of public service. So now for the big moment. I would like to unveil the plaque. Oh, wow. Can I see it okay? It's a beautiful picture of Vice Mayor Rita Wilson. Uh, I'm going to read what's on the plaque to everyone. Go ahead and read it from my paper in front of me so I'm not having to turn my head. Okay, so the plaque narrative says, Rita S. Wilson served the city of Stanton with integrity, diligence, and distinction as a member of city council from December 1991 through June 2008 including a term as vice mayor from 1998 to 2000. Ms. Wilson served city council over the years in many capacities, including liaison to various organizations and held many leadership positions with the Virginia Municipal League. She also served the children and families of Stanton with zeal and compassion as a member of the Stanton School Board from 1985 to 1989, serving as vice chair in her last year. Ms. Wilson was instrumental and many achievements during her service, including the revival of her alma mater, the former Booker T. Washington High School, as a community center, and its registration as a Virginia historical landmark and listing on the National Register of Historic Places. She made many other and numerous and unforgettable contributions to the Stanton community, displayed remarkable initiative in tackling community problems, and her willingness or shared her, of her time, energy, and talent as a leader in many of the city's major public services and charitable organizations. Her indomitable, fearless, and vivacious spirit and community service leadership 
enrich the quality of life across her community and have appropriately been recognized with honors and awards from local and national groups, recognition that has reflected well on her city. So congratulations to the city of Stanton. It is with great honor that we now dedicate the chambers, the Rita S. Wilson Council Chambers. Okay, at this time, I would like to uh, give um, our special guests the opportunity to um, say a few words about um, Rita Wilson, if they have any stories they would like to share. Um, Mr. Rosenberg, why don't we go to the Zoom uh, guest first? Which um, we have, um, well, we have um, Davenport, and we have um, former Vice Mayor Dave Metz, former city manager Bob Stripling, and former Vice Mayor uh, Dick Robertson. Would any of you care to uh, share any stories concerning Rita? Madam Mayor? Oh, go ahead. Yes. This is Ronald Dick Robinson. I just have a couple of comments to make about a very special friend, and that's Rita Wilson. Uh, I served on our city council for 12 years, and during that time, Rita was there with me and helped me in so many different ways. Um, I worked with a very special lady, and Rita Wilson. The thing that I remember the most about Rita was my first year on council, and I wasn't the smartest person in the room, and Rita was always there to help me give me advice, explain some things to me, which I cannot forget. I remember so much about that. And Rita was like that with many people in the city of Stanton, which made it a lot nicer for us to serve on council and to represent the city of Stanton. She always took the time to listen and to help. And I thank you for letting me be a part of this recognition for a very special lady. Ms. Rita Wilson. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, past Vice Mayor Robertson. Um, we appreciate your comments. Uh, Vice Mayor Metz, did you want to say a few yes, words? Yes, I, I just wanted to say that I was fortunate enough to have served with Rita for eight years when I first came on council. And mm. I think the growth that she showed me as far as how to be a council member what I should know and what I should do. Um, Rita was just so spectacular in terms of the mentoring that she gave to me as well as she gave to everybody. Rita was just really special and I think this is a tremendous honor um, to put in her memory. So that's all I have to say except for it was what an honor to serve with her. Thank you, past Vice Mayor Metz. Um, Ms. Davenport, would you like to say anything about your mother? <laughs> Good evening, Madam Mayor. Um, I thank you all for the opportunity to speak this evening at your meeting as you recognize my mom. Um, my sisters are here with me, so we're all three watching, and we just would like to say that we are so honored and so happy. Um, we were able to attend the dedication, um, the family dedication a week or so ago, and um, we were so thrilled with the, the lettering, and we were so thrilled with the beautiful plaque um, that has been um, made to be on the wall there at City Council. Um, we're just really happy that mom's being recognized in this way, and also, um, I'm sorry, I get a little emotional, but um, she loved Stanton. She loved working on city council. She, um, that was her, that was her arena. I think she, she just loved making sure that people in, in the city of Stanton were cared for. Um, and we just want to say thank you so much for, um, this recognition. 
Thank you for being here. Did uh, your sisters want to say anything? I, or they, they're the crying. children. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to speak. They're crying. <laughs> <laughs> thank you all so much. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you for being here. And um, your mother uh, was such a gift to the city. So thank you for sharing her um, to the beautiful city of Stanton. And she helped to make our city even more beautiful. So um, thank you. Is um, former city manager Bob Stripling? Is he? Okay. Alrighty. Um, well, I'd love to open um, the mic up to our guests in attendance um, in the audience. If anyone would like to come forward and share a few uh, memories about Rita Wilson, um, please feel free. Hi, welcome, Vice Mayor Kyer. Good evening, uh, Ophi Kyer, 301 Young Avenue, Standard, Virginia. Uh, so Madam Mayor and members of council, I had to be here tonight because I just wanna say what an honored was to take the moment back in June to make the motion to dedicate this chambers after a lady that's worked so hard and so diligently for this city, a lady that pulled her colleagues over to the Sunnyside neighborhood to show them what some other people lived like and what things, things that had to be done in that neighborhood that took them to what we call the Johnson Street neighborhood mm -hmm. and showed them what people were enduring and living like there and make progress and as you stated and as it's on the plaque uh, to work hard to open, to save Booker T. Washington School and turn it into a community center. Uh, Rita and I went back very far. I was actually her campaign manager when she first started and then she became my mentor and forcefully encouraged me to step forward to, actually to school board and then to city council and she became my campaign manager. Mm -hmm. So there were a lot of years, I know Rita shared stories that some wouldn't believe. Uh, the one that I remember the most, of course, was how she worked as a domestic in her early years, cleaning houses uh, for some local doctors, families, and how after cleaning the bathroom, she couldn't use them, and how she had to use one with a curtain around it down in the basement. Um, so it was a tremendous honor to put Rita Wilson in the very front hall of our city council to honor her for the work she did in this city. Thank you. Thank you, Vice Mayor Kyer. I know you were like a, um, a baby brother to her. Um, would anyone else care to share a story or any comments about past Vice Mayor Rita Wilson? Madam Mayor, members of council, it's a pleasure for me to be here this evening and uh, talk about Rita. Uh, probably if it wasn't for her, I would never run for council. She encouraged me. Um, <clears throat> I go way back with Rita, way before I was on council, but uh, she was a lady that cared about everybody. And <clears throat> She did not mind it if you disagreed with her, but you better listen to her when she talked. And uh, she was forceful about and passionate about things that she cared about. And she cared about a lot of things. So um, I think it's very appropriate that you name this chambers after her and I commend you all for doing it. Thank you. Thank you, Liz. Thank you, past mayor. Lacey King. Would anyone else? Hi. Council Member Elder. Good evening, Madam Mayor, members of council. It is humbling to be in front of you on this wonderful night. Rita Wilson was incredibly important to this community. The word you're going to hear a lot tonight from all of us is love. She loved her family. And she loved this city. I'm just so proud of you for doing this. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bruce. Oh, well, thank you, Councilman Elder. It's very touching. Past Mayor, John Madam Avoli. Mayor, members of Council, I'm John Avoli, and 
Uh, I had the privilege of coming on Stanton City Council in 1990 and served till 206 and 14 of those years as mayor of the city of Stanton. I remember December of 1991, uh, we had a council retreat and one of our council members disagreed with the group and decided to resign. And that's when Risa was appointed to fill the unexpired term on city council. You know, what was amazing about that time is that uh, we had uh, a bunch of white old guys here and we were interested in dealing with infrastructure in the city of Stanton. Uh, Rita came on and brought the motherly image of dealing with social issues that needed to be addressed. And she did quite well. She was convincing to the group and did a wonderful job in doing that. So from that period on, uh, it became a, a very wonderful time with us. And Sheila and the group down there, hi everybody in Richmond, good to see y'all. Uh, some of the stories that I have uh, are, are probably revolving around Baldwin Jennings right here. Uh, I remember one evening, uh, Miss Wilson who sat next to me, kicked me for about five minutes because Mr. Jennings under matters from the public, as you know, he gets quite animated. And uh, I believe it was about <laughs> the end of 1991, uh, Baldwin comes up and used all kind of superlatives uh, to mention about what the council was doing. And I banged the gavel and I said to him, Mr. Jenny, we are not going to blah, 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 blah. So I said it right back. <laughs> so Rita's kicking me underneath the table. You know what you just said? I said, yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> what happened with that? Um, I think the Booker T. Washington uh, operation there was uh, a highlight for Rita. Um, and as uh, Ophi Kyer said, uh, she did, along with Irvin Bryant, take us mm -hmm. to Sunnyside, uh, took us up to uh, the Green Street area and her beloved Mary, uh, Mary Baldwin, Booker T. Washington. Uh, I think that was a labor of love uh, for all of them. And after that, you know, uh, we had a, a really nice um, uh, rock and roll group here called Wanda and the White Boys. We became known after that as Rita Wilson and the White Boys. Mm -hmm. uh, politically correct at the time. Uh, you know, you probably wouldn't say that today, but this is a story I can tell about Miss Wilson. She was a wonderful lady. She also had uh, had the privilege of having her and her cousin Nadine with me. Uh, my first trip to Italy. Uh, she went to Italy with me with Nadine and 20 other people. And we toured and toured. And uh, I think maybe her best time was when she came to my home and met my family and met uh, the, the nice lady, Rita Wilson and, uh, and Nadine, that we had a wonderful, wonderful time. So uh, how befitting it is uh, to name this council chamber after uh, Rita Wilson. And uh, it is an honor to be here tonight and serve on the dedication. And uh, to the family in Richmond and the ladies, uh, good seeing you all. Yeah. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Um, I guess I should say delegate of Oli, um, but also served as our past mayor. Would anyone else like to share any stories? Um, anyone at all? Um, Mr. Gwen, do you have any stories to share? <laughs> okay. <laughs> All privileged information. Okay, <laughs> All right. Baldwin, I know you're. I know you're itching to get up there. Go ahead. <laughs> well, somebody had to. Somebody had to. All right. Well, with that, um, I would like to um, open up the floor to council members, um, and I'd like to start with uh, council member Carolyn Dole because um, I know that um, Carolyn Dole worked with. Um, Rita Wilson, not only on the city council, but I believe um, in her work life as well. Um, council member Dole, would you like to share any stories or comments about Rita Wilson? Well, I can say, I could say a lot about Rita, but some would be censored. So I'll just stick to what I can say in public. Uh, we both worked uh, in uh, mental health, uh, uh, our local CSB and she, was instrumental in finding homeless uh, folks and getting them encouraged enough to come and seek uh, shelter and services from the Valley CSB. And that was a, a really uh, good help. Uh, I, went, I, I went on council in 2006 and Rita and I hit it off because, uh, well, because we did. And, and uh, so I would give her rides to the VML meetings in uh, Richmond. And we would, uh, in season, we would be stopping at Child's Peach Orchard for sure on the way back so she could get her peaches. 
and and she's everything that everybody said about it. She 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 cared about this city. She didn't do things just for her own personal agenda. She did what was right for the city. And I always felt that and and she didn't she didn't hide how she thought. She was straightforward and I appreciated that. Uh, there was no political backstabbing or any of that going on. She was a straight shooter. Uh, and finally, I'll say that she is the reason that uh, I am known throughout the state as Mustang Sally. <laughs> oh yeah, the VML conferences. It's not a conference unless we get to hear you sing Mustang Sally. I did not realize that Rita started that tradition. So, um, Would anyone else on the council care to share a few memories or thoughts about um, Rita Wilson? Uh, this Councilman is, uh, Holmes. Uh, this is uh, Terry Holmes. Uh, I never worked with Rita, but Rita was a customer of mine and she was always funny and, and liked to laugh and she just was full of life. And, and she cared about this city and she cared about everybody. And it was just, she was always so much pleasure to, to deal with. And, uh, and I was really glad to hear that we dedicated the uh, chamber to her in, in her honor because she was a uh, trailblazer and, uh, and we need more of them. Thank you. All right, well, thank you. Would anyone else? All right, well, I would like to say that um, I first met Rita when I uh, went on the school board back in 2000. And one thing I admired about her, she treated the school board members with respect and she always had our backs. I mean, she um, made a point to push the school budget when it came time um, to approve the uh, overall budget. And she made sure that the schools had everything that we needed um, because educating the children was number one on her list. Uh, as a school board member, I can, remem I can recall the time that um, I was chosen it was the month of November. I was chosen to attend the city council meeting. And so I thought, well, you know, it's close to Thanksgiving. Uh, I'm gonna show my appreciation to all the council members. So I set a little, um, a little ceramic turkey at every one seat. And when the city council members came out of the caucus room uh, to go into the regular meeting, um, Ms. Wilson sat down and she looked at that turkey and she looked at me and she's like, all right, Andrea, are you trying to call the city council members a bunch of turkeys? <laughs> <laughs> and um, anyway, I, um, <laughs> I, I stood up and I'm like, no, ma'am, no, ma'am. <laughs> um, with Rita, she, um, she was always such a loving individual. Um, you did know where you stood with her if she did not like um, a position that you had taken on a um, particular issue, she would let you know it, um, but she was always respectful and she was a lady that was very graceful and she really, truly, like um, past council member Elder said, she truly loved this city and for her, it was all about the love. Um, she did not have to do what she did for this city, but she did it because she truly cared not only for the Stanton of today, but the Stanton of tomorrow. And for that, it is truly an honor to be able to sit in the Rita S. Wilson Council Chambers and conduct city business. So thank you to past Vice Mayor Rita Wilson, and thank you to her family again for sharing your wonderful and just absolutely um, amazing mother with the city of Stanton. Madam Mayor, shall we wrap up with the video? Yes, that was okay. next oh, on my list. Okay, so, yes. All right, so next um, we are going to have a video to honor the memory of Rita S. Wilson. After raising five children, she worked for the state for, um, I think it was 27 years. Uh, she got early retirement at the time she was living in Northern Virginia and she moved back to Stanton. Um, I think she 
saw a lot of things that were going on that um, she didn't feel were quite fair. The, uh, the Johnson Street, um, Green Street areas were very run down. Um, and um, as always, whenever she saw a need, she just felt um, that she had to, to get involved to fix it. I think she was most proud of the Johnson Street project. Through that whole process, getting what we call the bottoms, the down in the very bottom of the Johnson Street on that end um, was very run down, uh, a lot of drug activity going on. Um, she worked very, very hard to get that neighborhood cleaned out, to get Habitat for Humanity um, homes in that area. So she was very passionate about getting that that area revitalized, um, getting the um, drug dealing out of her community um, and getting affordable and clean housing. She also considered herself to be the queen of the Queen City. And we actually have a plaque at home uh, that says, Rita Wilson, Queen of the Queen City. And she wore a tiara. She often wore her tiara to a uh, city council meeting. She knew that she was a trailblazer. Um, she always wanted someone to step up um, to, rep to represent the black community. As a lot of times she just decided, you know, if I want it done, I'm gonna have to do it. And uh, so that's what she did. Mom had so much integrity. She had, had so much love for this community, for the people of this community. My prayer is that decisions that come out of this room are decisions that are good for the whole community, not just for our chosen few, you know, not just for the people who can afford it, but for everybody, for the, for the entire city of Stanton, that um, when people come into this room, when decisions are being made, that um, that they're made knowing that they're going to impact people's lives. Government has, has come to be so important in our lives. And, and um, so I hope that the decisions that are, are made here in this room have the, have the same integrity, the same honesty um, that Mama always displayed, um, that, that have, show a desire to love this community and to serve this community. The Rita S. Wilson Memorial Scholarship was created in the honor of my grandmother, Rita Wilson. My grandmother was a lifelong learner who started her education um, in her adult years. She decided to go back to school to get her uh, degrees. And she got her associate degree from Blue Ridge Community College and she got her, um, her bachelor's from Mary Baldwin uh, College, now University. And she did this while she had a family and she thought it was it was important enough to get her education and show her family that how important it was. Education was always a huge passion for her and also was serving, being a servant individual to her community. That's why she was on city council for so long. Uh, so this scholarship is one that is awarded to a non-traditional student, uh, an individual who is, is an adult learner, and is also for high school seniors who just graduated. This scholarship will be uh, awarded to uh, a Stanton, Augusta County resident uh, who looks to go into the educational field. To any individual who is interested in donating to the Rita Wilson Memorial Scholarship, please go to the Community Foundations of the Central Blue Ridge website and you can donate online directly. Thank you so much. Um, as you heard Rita's grandson mention um, Rita's legacy, the Rita S. Wilson Memorial Scholarship. Uh, if anyone is interested in donating, um, please go online and do so. It's a just a wonderful scholarship. And, and you heard it from uh, Rita's daughter that um, Rita's watching us from, uh, from heaven. So she's keeping a close eye on us. Um, thank you to everyone, to all the guests for coming out and honoring uh, the memory of Rita S. Wilson and the dedication of the Rita S. Wilson Council Chambers. So thank you for attending.
if you'd like to stay, feel free. <laughs> we have plenty of business to go over. Uh, but if not, if you would um, go ahead and like to head on home, uh, feel free. But again, thank you. Thank you. Good seeing you, Bruce. See you, Bruce. See you, Ocean. Take care. Bye, Bruce. Okay, so the next item on the agenda is item number three, a discussion of ordinance to amend the FY 2021 budget for the city of Stanton by adding budget amendment number four. This is also item number B on the regular uh, meeting agenda. Mr. Rosenberg. Madam Mayor, Phil Trayer, the city's chief finance officer will present this item and the next two items. Thank you, Mr. Rosenberg. Madam Mayor, members of council, it's a pleasure to be here this evening. Tonight, we are here to introduce budget amendment number four. Budget amendment number four is this year's major budget amendment, which captures prior year carryover, grant award true ups, new grants, donations, and insurance recoveries. Budget amendment number four totals $12,923,776 and does require a public hearing, which was properly advertised. The city portion of this budget amendment equals $9,915,000. The school portion of the budget amendment equals Three million eight thousand dollars. As the comparisons, last year's major budget amendment equaled ten million three hundred twenty-nine thousand dollars. Details of the budget amendment have been summarized in the pack and includes the following: five point one million dollars in general fund provisions, including three hundred seventy-five thousand dollars in general government, sixty-three thousand dollars for judicial administration, three hundred thirteen thousand dollars for public safety, seven hundred four thousand dollars for public works. 6,600 for parks, recreation, and cultural, 120,000 for community development, $3,515,000 transferred to other funds. The CIP fund has a transfer of $2,515,000 to fund CIP projects. We, we are adding one million, we are proposing to add $1 million to supplement the debt service sinking fund, a million 20,000 for community development fund. <clears throat> 248,000 for Blue Ridge Court Services, 27,000 for Grants Fund, $8,654 for the Water Fund, $1,879,000 for the Education Fund, $1,053,000 for the School CIP, $60,000 for the School Cafeteria, and $15,000 for the School State Operated Program. The City Manager recommends the introduction a budget number four public hearing is scheduled for later this evening and again that was properly advertised. Um, we had had passed out earlier today some slide presentation. There's quite a bit of information in these slides that have been passed out so I'd like to take a few minutes to review the year-end carryover provisions that have included in this budget amendment. Also I'd like to mention our initial audit is due to be presented to council next month. There is a possibility that this audit will not be complete as federal audit guidelines concerning the CARES Act funds have not been finalized and uh, every locality in the state of Virginia is faced with this. Slides five and six addresses the city's FY2020 local revenue performance. Our FY2020 budget to local revenues equals 45,897,000 versus actuals of 47 million 36, 39,000 for an overall positive variance of $1,315,000. Personal property tax, which is collected in December, outperformed budget by $641,000. Local sales tax, in spite of everything, outperformed budget $555,000. And business license tax, outperformed budget by $244,000. Given the pandemic, we do not anticipate the results being quite as positive in this year's collection. On slide six, continuous local revenues, and here we have positive variances for fines, interest, and miscellaneous of $144,000. Licenses and permits are down $71,000, and as you can imagine, fourth quarter has seemed to plummet. Recovered costs are up slightly by $10,000, and charges for services are down by $226,000. Parks and recs, collections in the fourth quarter is primarily, primarily the results of that. On slide seven, we have state and federal revenue breakouts. Shared expenses, which is reimbursement for constitutional positions are down slightly by 50,000. Law enforcement, HB 599, is up slightly due to $35,000 increase from the state. 
Social Services and Child Service Act largely offset each other, and other state and federal revenues show a negative balance of $2,182,000. 95% of this is CARES Act money that was received in FY 2020, was not spent in FY 2020, but was recorded on the balance sheet as deferred revenue in FY 2020. Slide eight is a summary of our budgeted revenue of 63,996,000 versus actual revenues of 61,182,000 for a negative variance of 2,813,000. In other words, we have 95.6% of budget revenue recorded in FY 2020. The breakdown includes, some of these numbers will sound familiar, positive variance in local revenues of 1.3 million a negative variance in state and federal of 2.1 million, and a negative variance in fund balance appropriation of $2 million as these funds have previously been recorded in prior years and not received in FY 2020. Slide nine begins our FY 2020 expense review. Overall budgeted expenses equal 63,996,000 versus actuals of 59,775,000 and encumbrances of $368,000 for a positive variance of $3,852,000, or 93.98% of the budget being spent. The majority of this variance can be found in general government function where CARES Act expenditures were initially recorded. So $2 million of this variance is associated with unspent CARES Act money in FY 2020. In addition, in response to the pandemic, the city manager initiated a spending freeze and as a result of this freeze, unspent appropriations were pulled from all departments and transferred into the contingency camp accounts so they could not be spent. This exceeded $1 million. On slide 10, slide 10 provides a little more clarity to the net savings at FY 2020. As you can see, we start with a positive variance of 3,852,000, less mandated carryovers of $242,000 and CARES Act variance of 2,089,000. After these reductions have been considered, we have a net savings of $1.5 million or 2.37%. Again, keep in mind the spending freeze enacted by the city manager in March helped to drive this variance. Slide 11 breaks out our reserves. We start off with our safety net of 8.7 million or 15.5% of our budget. Employee leave of 1.7 million. Encumbrances of 368,000. Contingency reserve $250,000 per finance policy. Restricted donations and grants 16,000 and prepaid advances of 100,000. Total reserves equal 11,220,000. Slide 12 provides a history of the safety net. We raised it one half of 1% in FY 2020 to 15.5%. It's proposed to remain at 15.5% for one more year. Our goal is 18%. Slide 13 reviews fund balance. We start off with a fund balance as of June 30th, 2019 of $16,216,000. We add FY 2020 revenues of 61,182,000, less FY 2020 expenditures of 15, 59,775,000 for net balance of $17,623,000. From there, we reduce reserves of 11,220,000 in the budget amendment entries of $226,000 for public safety forfeiture revenue and program funds. This gives us an unassigned fund balance of $6,176,000. As a comparison, FY19's unassigned fund balance was 4.1 million. FY18's was 4.2 million. Slide 14 provides a summary of our recommendations for the use of the fund balance. For the most part, we, we, have, we have incorporated these, these items into your budget amendment. The CIP transfer of $1,475,000 is based upon the most recent approved capital improvement plan and is funding the FY22 plan, which calls for the use of FY21's year-end budget amendment to fund these projects. These monies will stay in the CIP contingency plan until council updates the new CIP um, plan in February, 2021. The technology we reserve addresses network equipment, which has surpassed its useful life and no longer supported by the vendor. 
In addition to not receiving manufacturer's tech support, we are no longer receiving security patches, which is leaving the system somewhat vulnerable. This project will also enhance our redundancy and allow for upgrades to our telephone system. The debt service sinking fund addition of $1 million will provide increased debt capacity of roughly $2.5 million, 30 years, 3.4%. The cash project contingency of $1.3 million provides the ability to avoid dipping into reserves during a cash flow cyclical valleys that occur each year and provides available resources in the event of the unexpected, such as a flood. The $500,000 for, for flood provision. To date, we've spent $225,000 on flood-related expenses with the Berkeley Place Wall project still outstanding. This project is not covered by insurance and engineering repair designs are about to be placed on the street for bids. The $40,000 for the Gypsy Hill Park Gate. This money is being set aside for the final costs associated with the reconstruction of the arch that goes over the entrance. Rock issues are driving this cost. $100,000 being set aside for district overlay. These funds were cut during the FY 2021 budget process. District overlays have been a source of citizen frustration and this project should address those concerns. I would also like to mention, I inadvertently referenced this as software in the briefing. This is for consultants. I will have that updated before you vote on it next month. Employee furlough waivers of $153,000 has previously been approved by council and do not appear in this budget amendment. We have $200,000 set aside for police vehicles. Police replacement vehicles were cut during the FY21 budget process and these vehicles will replace cars that are in excess of six years old. 48% of the current police vehicle fleet exceeds six years. Recommended replacement cycles calls for three years for fleet cars and five years for take home cars. And finally, we have $367,000 in operational contingency, which will provide resources for un unbudgeted options that we anticipate coming forward in subsequent months. The remaining slides um, is trying to put a little bit of order and clarity to the budget amendment. This budget amendment is uh, chock full of numbers and it's very confusing. So we're gonna try to provide a little bit of clarity to this. On slide 15, breaks up carry forward dollars incorporated into this budget amendment. It includes asset forfeiture funds and fire program funds, totally $226,000. Slide 16 incorporates the use of fund balance as outlined above. You'll find all of these items referenced in slide 14. Slide 17 outlines FY 2020 grant carryover funds as well as new grant funds initiated and received during FY 2021 and have been before council. Slide 18 outlines community development grants received. These are our HUD grants, both carryover and new, all have been before council. The Blue Ridge Court Services Appropriations of $248,000 is a combination of prior year carryover and new FY 2021 grants that have been before council. Slide 19 appropriates insurance recoveries and donations received thus far uh, in FY 2021. Slide 20 outlines school appropriations. I'd like to mention none of these Dollar amounts requires any additional city funds. The appropriation includes $2.9 million in the education funds for new grants and federal grant carryovers, $145,000 for donations and insurance recovery, and $1.1 million for CIP appropriations. Uh, finally, $15,000 for school state operated program. Slide 21 provides a high level overview of the school CIP. Again, we have $1.1 million in school CIP appropriations, roughly $700,000 from school fund balance, 193 from CARES Act funds for received directly by the schools from the state and $64,000 in insurance recovery for an HVAC chiller replacement. And finally, slide 22 covers the cafeteria fund of $60,000. 99% of this amount was carried over from the prior year. So with that, and I will remind you, you, you have four weeks to continue to digest this.
I will be happy to field any phone calls and meet with any council members if it for the further clarifications. Yes, um, because tonight the uh, vote is um, for an introduction to the ordinance. Yes, um, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Um, okay. Uh, does anyone on council have questions or comments? Okay. All right. I guess you're up for the next item, Mr. Rosenberg. Uh, ma Madam Go Mayor, I'm going to ask Mr. Trayer if he's agreeable to what I'm going to suggest. Um, we appropriately spent the time that we did on the dedication of council chambers. Um, we're, we're a little bit behind mm -hmm. on the agenda and I'm wondering, Mr. Trayer, if you might cover the territory on the appropriation uh, during the regular meeting. Um, when that item is on the agenda, that would allow us to skip to item five on the work session agenda, which is the presentation of the quarterly financial report. Um, and we can uh, try to get ourselves closer to the, the schedule for the remainder of the work session. All right, thank you. Um, are there any objections um, from council members? All right, hearing none, go ahead, Mr. Trayer. Very good. Pleasure to be back. Tonight we're here also to report the first quarter of FY 2021 audited, unaudited postings of revenue expenditures. Year-to-date revenues posted through September 30, 2020 equals 7,893,000 or 14% of the annual appropriation. In FY 2020 through the first quarter, posted revenue were 7.2 million or 12.1% of the annual appropriation. Even though we are 25% of the way through the fiscal year, 14% is a little bit above average given the timing of major revenue sources such as real estate taxes and personal property taxes. Local tax of interest, this is a positive story. Sales tax is up $1,700 over the same time last year, but we budgeted 25% down, so we're actually $199,000 ahead of forecasted budget in this line item thus far. Meals tax is down 119,000 over same time last year, but again, we're up about $182,000 over forecasted budget. Lodging revenue is down 107,000 over same time last year, and we're down 52,000 versus forecasted budget. On expense side, we have posted 9.7 million or 17.3% of the annual appropriation fairly consistent with prior year. First quarter FY20, we had expensed 9.8 million or 16.3 of the annual appropriation. And year on year expenses uh, are down $95,000. So it's, it's, it's still very early. Uh, good positive news on the revenue front. Um, but if you've watched the news lately, uh, you're hearing of additional state shutdowns. You're hearing proposed six week shutdowns from the new administration. It remains to be seen what the effects of this uh, pandemic is gonna have on our revenue, but we are off to a good start, which should help us weather the storm. All right, are there any questions from Mr. Trayer? All right, thank you. Thank you. All right, item number six is an update on the Stanton Crossing Economic Development and Business Plan. Mr. Rosenberg. Madam Mayor, Billy Vaughn, the city's Community Development and Economic Development Director will present this item. All right, welcome. Welcome. Good evening, Madam Mayor, members of council. I, I don't have nowhere near the number of numbers. <laughs> Thank you all presented. Are here to Thank you. <laughs> Uh, as, as a standard, I'm here for the quarterly update on staff's progress to implement the recommendations of the Stanton Cross business plan, which was approved by EDA and council last year. Tonight, I'll focus on site preparation as it relates to the demo demolition. And you have information in your briefing, and I'll highlight some of that information, but also provide um, an update on additional efforts that have happened since uh, your agenda uh, packet was uh, sent out. First thing I'll talk about is the uh, posting of the invitation to bid. That was done on September the 10th. Mm -hmm. Quickly thereafter, about a week, uh, we held a mandatory pre-bid meeting where all the contractors had to attend and it was an in-person meeting at uh, the uh, Gypsy Hill Gym. There were 25 companies present 
from seven states. So it was a very good turnout. We did do the social distancing for that as well though. Of course. Um, on October the 14th, which was the deadline for submitting proposals, we received 10 bid responses and two were under the current approved budget of $2,886,000. So two under the budget. The lowest bid was $452,000 under that budgeted amount. So that was very attractive compared to last year uh, when the, the bids came back over budget. Matter of fact, the lowest budget this year, bid this year was $917,000 lower than last year. On October 22nd, the EDA was briefed on these efforts and they adopted the resolution, which is attached in your packet. In effect, authorizing the city through its current procurement process to proceed with the demolition project. Mm -hmm. On November the 6th, to ensure that the two low bidders will qualify, uh, they were vetted by a professional consultant that specializes in project review and guidance. And this, in, in, in particular, for demolition projects. Um, Mr. Traer uh, felt like we needed to ensure that the two low bidders could do the job uh, efficiently and effectively. The next step in the process, the city will post following proper procurement procedures, the intent to award, and that should go out next week. Uh, this notice must be published for a minimum of 10 days to allow the other bidders to comment and question uh, the selection by the city. As outlined in the invitation to bid documentation, plans are for the city to select a bidder with hopes of that contractor starting sometime in December. So that's a quick overview. If there are any questions about the procurement process, I'll be glad to try to answer those. And Mr. Traer is here to, uh, assist. Okay. Um, now this is for information only. Uh, we will not be having a vote on this. It's simply information. Yes. So um, are there any questions or comments from council members? Mayor. Um, so council I'm, member Holmes. I can't see you for the dedication. Uh, Mr. Vaughn. Yes, sir. Are, are they going to take down all the buildings? Yes. The low bid or well, the two lowest bids include demolishing all 19 buildings and removing all 17 above and underground tanks. And we would start with the building, they would start with the building that is currently partially in the VDOT right of way. Vice Mayor Robertson. Mr. Vaughn, is there, is there any, um, or do we have any update on possibility of businesses that would like to purchase acreage from the city as is and how that might affect uh, the procedure going through. At the EDA's last meeting, uh, the, there was discussion regarding uh, past offers on the property and uh, the conclusion of that meeting and what's included in the resolution. And at this time, the EDA did not feel that it was necessary to move in that direction for selling any property or buildings. Uh, prior to the demolition. Now, Council Member Claffey. Was there a, uh, a specific bid for how much the, the one single building that we were interested in having demolished in order for the roadway to be uh, completed? The 8.7. Yes. And how much was that building's demolition? I don't have that right in front of me, but the price for the contractor to demolish that building as part of the entire project versus coming in and staging to demolish just one building was about the same. There was not much difference. Surprisingly, there was not much difference. And that's the building that the one you're referring to is in the proposed in VDOT right away. Partially right, right away. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, I thought we had asked for that as a... That was received. That's in the bid responses. I just don't have it here in front of me. Oh. 
Right. Mayor Oaks, this is Councilwoman Mead. Councilwoman Mead. Just a question for Mr. Bond. During this 10 day period, uh, when we, um, th that you mentioned, uh, would you expect um, a, a little more competition from those who bid already on the project? The bid uh, deadline has passed. Um, we received 10 bids. Uh, we'll select the low bidder or yeah, we'll probably select a low bidder. There's no opportunity for someone to come in and submit another bid, but okay. they can question the selection by the city. And I'm probably stepping out of my area of expertise. So if that didn't answer your question, maybe Mr. Clare could speak to it. Uh, no, thank you. I think you answered the question. I just wanted to determine whether the bid process was over or whether the purpose of this 10 day period where other contractors had the opportunity to question the decision of the city if there was another opportunity for someone to come in lower again. Any other questions? All right, any other questions? Yeah. Council member um, Darby. Mr. Vaughn, uh, can you, can you, you said that the, the EDA decided they didn't want to go in the route of um, something that there was already a possible offer mm -hmm. on the billing. Well, well, can you enlighten me as to why they didn't want to go down that path? Last year, when we went through this process, we had a couple of entities that were interested in uh, pro uh, purchasing property. And uh, at least one seemed somewhat attractive. Uh, there were questions about their financial ability, but seemed attractive. And at that time, we received bids back that exceeded our budget, uh, considerably more than the budget uh, that was approved for the project. So we felt that if we could sell those one of those buildings, that would reduce our cost and, and make it where we would be able to demolish the remain, remaining buildings. This year around, the EDA felt that because the bids came back under budget, uh, there was no need to accept outside funds and make it happen, that we needed to proceed and create a clean slate out of Stanton Crossing. Vice Mayor Robertson. All right. Mr. Rosenberg, I'd like to make a formal request that this item be placed on next month's uh, thing to actually ha have a closed session. Well, we'll have to confer with the city attorney as to whether it's an item that will qualify for That's such fine. a session. That's fine. I've just got some questions unanswered that I don't. I want to talk further. Well, per perhaps we can uh, receive your, your questions and, and answer them without the need to include it on a, on a closed meeting agenda. Um, we'll talk about that later. Yeah. Sure. And then, you know, it's not the satisfaction I can always press on. And what is the deadline to request to have it put on the agenda for December? Well, there's plenty of time it would be the uh, no i realize that but is, uh the the friday what, what's the date of that two fridays before the yeah uh the actual meeting date might be a Mayor holiday might be the day after. council member holmes yes but uh, are, aren't we planning on already having the demolition start in december i mean uh that would I don't see how much you could. Uh, What's the date of the demolition? The document stated that we'd like to have it started in December. If there is concern about a certain building maybe being demolished or not being demolished, uh, that won't affect us moving through the process of securing a contract. Uh, what we could do is have conversation with the contractor about the fact that there may or may not be interest in certain buildings. And so we'd have that discussion with them about where to, where to begin demolition mm -hmm. while we deliberate over which buildings may or may not be demolished. Okay. And this would have to run through the EDA mm -hmm. as well. And okay. which they meet next Thursday. Next Thursday, okay. Yes. All right. And if you're referring to that confidential offer that was received mm -hmm. that will be presented to the EDA in closed session next Thursday. Okay. 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 All right. Were there any comments or questions? 
So just, just to be clear. Yes, sir. I think what Mr. Vaughn is suggesting is that um, we will move forward with the procurement process, um, issue the notice of intent to award the contract and award the contract, proceeding with the project as scheduled, uh, but coordinating with the contractor to which the contract is awarded to prioritize buildings to be demolished um, and to establish an order so that if there's an issue with one, one or two particular buildings uh, that have been the subject of uh, prior discussions mm -hmm. that those can be at the end of, toward the end of the project in order to allow a further discussion or exploration of uh, those those um, prior discussions. Is, it, is yes. that what you have in mind, Mr. That Lawrence? is correct. I'm, I'm good with that. Yeah. All right, yeah, that sounds fair enough. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Billy. Uh -huh. okay, we are actually four minutes ahead of schedule. <laughs> Um, so at this time we are on break. We will be back at 630. Okay, we're back from break. And the next item on the agenda is item number seven, an update on the city council, uh, excuse me, the city attorney search. Mr. Rosenberg. Madam Mayor, John Venn, the city's chief human resources officer, will present this item. Thank you, Mr. Rosenberg, Madam Mayor, members of council. Um, this evening, I just wanted to take a few minutes to brief you on the process for the hiring of the next city attorney, including what the timeline may look like for interviews. That's really what I, what I would, I wanna get that out to you all for you all to begin thinking about that. Uh, just so you are aware, on October 28th, we went ahead and, and put the advertisement on our employment website uh, on that date and in, in probably October 29th, 30th and 31st. We also advertised uh, the city attorney's position on the local government attorney of Virginia website, the Virginia Bar Association, the Virginia Lawyers Weekly, Virginia Municipal League, VML, uh, the Virginia Association of Counties, VACO. Uh, and we also had the Virginia School Board Association, the Council of Attorneys, uh, send out information, the advertisement in email format. So the information is out there. Uh, we are hoping for uh, a good applicant pool. Uh, so when we look at in terms of the end, um, Mr. Gwynn will be, I don't wanna speak for Mr. Gwynn, but he's here, will be leaving us at the end of January. So with that timeline in place, the, app, the uh, application deadline is set for November 30. So we're looking at sometime in December, early January interviews will need to take place. We'll have to have a discussion, have to have um, input about what that may look like in terms of first round, second round of interviews. That's something that you all will have to decide. But, but it, you know, obviously it's gonna be complicated with the holidays coming up after Thanksgiving, we're gonna be you know, knee deep in to uh, winter, Christmas. And it's something that we'll have to discuss about getting on everyone's calendars for interviews. Um, that's really, I wanted to brief you this evening about. I'd be more than happy to answer any questions you may have at this point. Um, Mayor Oaks, this is Councilwoman Mead. Councilwoman <clears throat> Mead. Yeah, John, uh, Mr. Ben, could you, um, I've been a little surprised that we've received no applications yet. It's been over two weeks, I think. So, we, so uh, Councilwoman Mead, we have had interest. I have fielded phone calls. Uh, I will share this with you. Uh, Mr. Rosenberg once told me that attorney, attorneys are famous for, for procrastination. So we will wait. <laughs> no, that's what Mr. Rosenberg shared with me. <laughs> when may have said that's something different. Speak for yourself. <laughs> so we have a November. <laughs> so, me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We have a November 30th deadline. That's uh, that's, that's correct. Right up, and we have Thanksgiving. So is it your is it your experience uh, as a 
uh, as a, a human resources manager that there would be no applicants uh, yeah. within two weeks of a posting like this? We have had that for other positions, yes. Um, I cannot tell you with 100% certainty we're going to have 100 applications over the next two weeks. I do believe we are going to get applications, good applications, over the next couple of weeks to do that. I will also say, and this has happened before, uh -huh. um, we can always extend that deadline. If you, city council, does not feel pleased with either the volume or quality of the applications that we receive, that's always a possibility, and we will amend the, amend the timeline. I have that another question as well. Could, could you help me understand what role Mr. Wood is playing at this point in the process? Yeah, so Mr. Wood and I have had uh, a number of conversations. Uh, he worked with me in terms of the advertisement. He worked with me in terms of the job description. He worked with me in terms of the brochure that I believe you all have seen. Uh, he uh, provided me information as, as as to where he believed we would get the most interest in terms of where we have posted or advertised for the position. Uh, so that is what uh, the um, interactions I've had with Mr. Woods so far today. Are there any additional questions? Uh, Vice Mayor Robertson. Yeah, John, uh, refresh my memory. You said what, when was the interview process? The end of December, January? That's something that city council will have to decide. With, with the end date of January 30th, um, we're going to need to have, and, and we'll have to decide on whether we have two, one round, two rounds of interviews, what, what that will look like. So that is something that we're going to have to nail down on city council's calendars sooner than later. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. Mayor. Um, council member Holmes. Uh, this is Terry Holmes. Uh, uh, Mr. Ben, uh, are we main, mainly concentrating in the state of Virginia? We're not looking out, are we looking outside the state? Or just... With the app where we are posting, it's in Virginia. <clears throat> that is correct. That is correct. And the job description, I don't have it in front of me, I believe says that they have to be able to practice law in the Commonwealth of Virginia. That's not to say we couldn't get somebody in a neighboring state, North Carolina, DC, Maryland, that may be able to practice in both localities. This is Councilwoman Mead again. Councilwoman Mead. Thank you. Um, John, I, I've been, I've worked uh, multiple times mm. with um, headhunters, what we call them, and, uh, and they have taken a very active role that goes beyond posting a position on websites and uh, reached out in their networks and, uh, and uncovered, in fact, that's their value, uh, and uncovered candidates. Uh, could Mr. Wood be convinced to take that kind of an active role at this point? I would believe he would. Um, that's something certainly I can have a conversation with him about. Thank you. All right. Are there any additional <clears throat> comments or questions? All right. Thank you, Mr. Vin. Thank you. All right. The next item on the agenda is item number eight, a discussion of the 2021 legislative program. Mr. Rosenberg. Madam Mayor, Assistant City Manager Leslie Beauregard will present this item. Great. Thank you, Madam Mayor, members of City Council. We actually met, um, spoke about this at the last um, meeting, um, and I have um, put in front of you a version that has some um, edits and alterations to it. I'm going to walk through some of those. Some of them are just edits. Some of them, though, are quite substantial. And so what we'll do after I walk through these um, changes to the 2021 program is open the floor for discussion, questions, and then I have provided Mayor Oaks with a motion if it, you would like to approve the legislative program this evening. And I will say also that at the next meeting on December 10th, Delegate Avoli and Senator Hanger have both confirmed that they are available to meet and to um, have a discussion about your legislative agenda. So we'll do that in December at our next meeting. So let me just walk through, um, I gave you two, I gave you a clean version and a marked up version. Um, I'm just going to walk through the marked up version. That's easier for me. <coughs> um, and if you start on the second page under Chesapeake Bay water quality, I cross out 80 million and 50 million to match the VML legislative program. That's the only change there. 
Under transportation, um, starting January 1st, 2021, it will be illegal for drivers to hold a cell phone while driving, and that's known as the hands-free driving legislation. So that is the reason number three is crossed out. On the next page, in, under predatory lending, so a law was passed during the 2020 session that curbs predatory lend payday lending and includes the following provisions. One, it limits the annual interest rate to 36% for all payday and title loans, and it requires lenders to look up prospective borrowers' eligibility in a database and prohibits loans to borrowers with outstanding short-term loans. So it does try to tighten this up a little bit. So I struck that entire section. On the following page, under the Equal Rights Amendment, Virginia became the 38th state to ratify the Equal Rights Amendment after the Senate and House of Delegates voted in January to approve the change to the U.S. Constitution. So that has been struck. Woohoo! <laughs> under fair elections, the last um, item bullet has been struck because the, the governor did something. Well, we just had an election day holiday. Um, the governor established that in April, so we just um, saw that happen on election day. But the legislation also, I'll just mention this, removed the requirement that voters show a photo ID prior to casting a ballot and expanded early voting to be allowed 45 days before an election without a stated reason. On the following page, under the Middle River Regional Jail, um, in the first paragraph, this is not a new item, but it expands the item a bit um, just to reiterate the need for additional staffing at the jail. The second item is new regarding a state funding and support of that for the expansion of the Middle River um, Regional Jail. <clears throat> On the next page, um, it's hard to see, but there's I struck the language about the um, regulation of disposable plastic bags because during the last session, legislation was passed that allows local governments to impose a five cent per bag local tax on disposable plastic bags that can be implemented on January 1st, 2021. Under mental health of first responders at VML suggestion, I added some language about managing, man managing stress and self-care techniques and resiliency and peer support. They suggested that language be added. Under economic development, the third item is new, and this is related to the Conflict of Interest Act that have affected um, industrial and economic development authorities. And the statement we're making here, and this comes directly from the VML language as well, that Stanton supports the need for transparency, but believes that the need must be balanced and that this disclosure is onerous, especially when you consider these are citizen volunteers. On the following page, there's three new items listed. These all come from the Virginia Municipal League Program. The first one is the Freedom of Information Act, stating that the city supports any position, the position that any proposed changes to the Freedom, Virginia Freedom of Information Act legislation be sent to the FOIA Advisory Council for recommendations before the General Assembly takes action. The second one, under Planning District Commissions, um, supports increased state funding for the statewide network of PDCs. And the final one under is sovereign immunity. Um, again, this is taken from the VML legislative program and that it asks that the Virginia General Assembly um, strengthen and maintain the principles of sovereign immunity for local governments and their officials. On the next, on the next page under water quality funding, um, I did receive this update from Phil Martin. Um, there were some accomplishments in this area, I'll just note, but there's still work to be done. And so the language added here recognizes that work, and it also recognizes that the requirement being imposed on local government as it relates to waste load allocation and nutrient targets is um, unnecessary. And then under land use control, that was simply moved from another section. So that language actually did not change, it was just moved into this area, which is the section of the program where we're asking the General Assembly not to impede our, um, any um, authority that we have or not to do anything harmful against us. That, those are the major changes. Other than that, there's some small edits. Um, 
So I'll open the floor now for discussion and questions. Um, right. Are there any questions or comments from the council members? Mayor Oaks, this is Councilwoman Mead. Councilwoman Mead. Yeah, I, uh, I am uh, in support of everything. Uh, the one issue that I have is under the economic development, uh, the disclosure, the statement about, uh, about onerous uh, disclosures. I frankly don't think we, um, we, we get enough disclosure about candidates for EDA and IDA positions. Uh, I think we should know whether, for instance, they file bankruptcy. Uh, we don't ask that question uh, when we ask, when we're interviewing folks about, about, or when we get financial information about folks who are, who are um, interested in being part of our economic development efforts. So uh, that particular sentence is the only issue that I have with our statement. Okay. Mayor um, Vice Mayor Robertson. <clears throat> I'm glad Jim is here. I just wanted to ask you if, to make sure uh, item U, the sovereign immunity is, does that go far enough? Is it worded properly as far as you're concerned about protection for police officers? Yes, I think so. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Assistant city manager um, Beauregard, did you, um, were you able to make note yes, of the council member uh, means? Okay. Uh, if I understand her comment, it was the, just the one part about owner's disclosure. That's correct. You're, I, I noted that. Yes, okay. All right. Great. Um, and which section, Vice Mayor Robertson? It was section you. U under sovereign immunity. I just put a check mark by that. It seems yeah. like that is fine. Okay. Chief of Police says it's good. <clears throat> okay. Great. Are there any other comments or questions? Right, um, item number B with the pediatric cancer research. Um, do we know if that's still at 4%? I mean, it's, that is so incredibly low. Um, do we know if it, the uh, funding towards pediatric cancer has gone up at all? I can try to find out. I actually had three people at VML <laughs> help me review this. Um, and so I can double check on that again, and just to make sure that that is still a correct percentage, um, you know, see if they can provide any guidance on that. I'd be happy to do that. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's so incredibly low. Um, all right. So it sounds like we need to make some alterations and tweak it. So we're not ready tonight to go ahead and pass the um, 2021 legislative uh, program. Um, and Ms. Beauregard, you can make those changes easily. Easily, yes, okay. ma'am. All right, great. Okay, um, that takes us to item number nine, a discussion of participation of police and fire rescue departments in July 4th event. Mr. Rosenberg. Uh, Madam Mayor, uh, this item is included on the agenda at the request of Council Member Dole, and I refer to her, defer to her. Thank you, this is Carolyn Dole. Uh, and, and thanks for not removing it this time from the agenda. So uh, what I'm trying to do is, uh, as, as you campaigned on, and as we all believe, we want to have transparency for our citizens. We had numerous citizens questioning about this uh, 4th of July parade because they didn't see it. They didn't know anything about it. They heard about it too late, etc. So... I think just to clear the air, uh, we can just go through and I can, I can tell you what I know about it. Um, on June 20th, Amy Darby sends an email to Steve Rosenberg asking if the city could do a parade of emergency vehicles, et cetera, with Council Uncle Sam and possibly Wilson Fairchild riding in a few loner pickup trucks. Since the thinking is to keep people from gathering in GHP, this could be done in a few neighborhoods across the city down the main thoroughfares so folks could just watch from their yards. Basically, we take the quasi parade to them, very low key, but in line with how COVID-19 has lended itself to drive by birthday celebrations, et cetera. I think this will show folks Stanton is still celebrating the fourth 
just differently. I will gladly help to arrange. And of course, that is that is the actual email it was sent. On June 23rd, Steve Rosenberg replies to all council members, Jim Williams and Scott Garber. And this is a quote, I've discussed this concept with Chief Garber and Chief Williams. They've indicated the ability as a part of their department's community outreach efforts and on a limited basis to participate in such a caravan organized by a party other than the city such an approach would be consistent with other parades in the city, which are not city events, and for which the city plays only a supportive role. Especially in the current environment and in the limited time before July 4, I hope you will appreciate that city resources are not available to assume responsibility for the logistics. I welcome further input slash thoughts from you, council members, and other council members elect all of whom are copied on this email to inform a final decision concerning city participation. <clears throat> so on June 23rd, I replied to all, the only difficulty I see is how you would cover the entire city. Otherwise, which neighborhoods would you leave out and why? Uh, June 23rd, Brenda Mead responded to all, having understood that no parade would be held, I've made plans to go sailing that weekend, weather permitting, and will not be available. On June 24th, Andrea Oaks replies to all, I am good with Amy's suggestion of a parade. Maybe the parade route could be posted on the city's website. There was no additional communication to Brenda Mead, Terry Holmes, or Carolyn Dole until July 4th, Amy Darby at 8.04 a.m. Good morning, happy 4th of July. We will be meeting at Terry Court around 9.30 to 9.45 this morning to line up for the impromptu parade. The responses on social media have been very favorable. Folks are excited and love the idea. I just wanted to reach out and say, please join us if you can. It would be great to show folks we are together today celebrating our great nation. July 4, Carolyn Dahl responds at 9.50. I just checked my email and saw this. I could have driven my car, but this notice was the first information about any plans I had received and clearly was too late for me to participate. July 4, Terry Holmes at 2.17 p.m just saw this and did not know that this was a definite thing. Worked till late last night and just now reading my emails. I need a bit more notice. Thank you, Terry. July 4th, 614, Brenda Mead. Steve, as you can see from the following emails, Terry, Carolyn and I were entirely left out of the planning and final details of this event. You made it clear in your previous conversations that this would not be a city sponsored event, but it had the stamp and public appearance of city approval when fire and police personnel and vehicles were employed. The failure of the organizers to include all members of council in the plans fosters the false narrative that Carolyn, Terry and I are unpatriotic and not team players. Facebook comments are already being made to that effect. If it's not a city event, city personnel and resources should not play a part. If it's a city event, all council members should be advised of the details in a reasonable time frame to make adjustments to our schedules as needed or desired. July 5th, Terry Holmes, 2.40 a.m. Mark, I work nights and would never check my email at 8 a.m. I also have been in every 4th of July Veterans Day Christmas parade, even when I was not feeling that great. I'm sure this was an oversight on y'all's part. All I'm asking is not to spring things like this on any of us, Terry. July 6, Andrea Oaks, 10.15 a.m. Councilperson Mead, it was America's birthday and we had a parade to celebrate America's birthday. Sorry you could not attend the celebration but I'm confident you were celebrating America somewhere. I was heartbroken that we were not able to have our traditional parade and fireworks in Stanton this year 
as sponsored by HBA. So as a result, an alternate style parade was created for July 4th and the citizens loved it. As far as notification, it appears everyone did receive the same emails at the same time on the subject matter. Next year, I look forward to you being in the parade sponsored by HBA celebrating this great country. God bless America, Mayor Andrea W. Oaks. Even now, the Stanton Republican Committee has a post on their Facebook page saying that the three of us declined to participate, which is untrue. I requested the parade route and the cost to the taxpayers. So the cost as well as I can calculate it was $702.67. I was also given a copy of the parade route that someone created and someone typed it up and someone made notes on it. I do not know who that is. So questions that remain unanswered. How did the four council members know to check their email at 8.04 that morning in order to get to Terry Court on time without prior knowledge? That's really curious to me. Who decided on the parade route? Was there some secret meeting or input from other people? Also the question from my email, the only difficulty I see is how you would cover the entire city. Otherwise, which neighborhoods would you leave out and why? <clears throat> I know that at least one person did a FOIA uh, request on this particular topic. I don't know if that person got all the information. And I refer back to Amy Darby's email that says social media, that the citizens are excited. The responses on social media have been very favorable. Was the uh, information on social media ever sent to the person that had the FOIA request? So I would be happy if any of you can answer who made the arrangements and how in the world did every one of the four of you know to check your email at 8.04 that morning in order to be uh, dressed and get your car decorated or whatever and be there on time? And who made up the route and why did you leave out some neighborhoods? So in the interest of transparency, citizens would like to know the answers to those questions. All right, are there any comments by council members? Mayor Oaks. Councilwoman Darby. <clears throat> Councilwoman Dahl. Um, I have sat on this council for a lot less time than you have, I realize that. I've only been here for five months. And I've listened quite a bit, more so than probably I've spoken. But I'm gonna speak now. And uh, what I want to say is that, you know, we're equal on this council. And so I don't answer to you, but I don't have a problem answering to the citizens. Um, this 4th of July drive-by parade, I cannot believe that we're talking about it five months later, but it is a non-issue. It was a nice, patriotic, simple gesture to bring joy to the citizens of Stanton. And it did, you know, the 4th of July in Stanton, Virginia has historically been a very special day. And everyone, just like you went through your litany just now, everyone here received the same information and could have participated. We all make choices. And when you received your email that morning, if it was really important to you, you could have jumped in your truck and you could have driven less than five minutes from your house and met us and participated, and it would have been fine. You know, we all make choices. We make choices when we look at our emails. We make choices when we respond. And this is really a non-issue. Um, there was no overtime expended to the fire or the police department by the city. The folks that participated were already on duty that day. 
as you read, the fire chief and the police chief in conjunction with the city manager said that this was a good community outreach opportunity and that, you know, they, they thought they would engage citizens that way and could possibly even use it as training efforts. That's what we want, right? Especially during a COVID-19 pandemic. Nobody complained when the police chief took an officer and went to Miss Mead Street on Sherwood Avenue and talked to citizen, engaged them and howled. Nobody has complained when the fire department, they take you know various practice runs with the apparatus because it does take practice to drive those through the city and uh, you know stop at a house here or there, wish people happy birthday or happy anniversary, just to be you know nice. Nobody complains about that. But here we are five months later, still talking about a 4th of July parade. When the fact be known, I don't know if you realize it or not, but our neighbors in the friendly city of Harrisonburg, they won an award at the Virginia Municipal League Conference that we all attended on Zoom, or most of us did, for a similar event that they've been doing for months now, their police convoy, where they go into various neighborhoods and they engage citizens and they talk to them and they see how they're doing. They won an award, so I wanna congratulate them for that effort. And apparently our veterans, our VFW, they like the, the drive-by parade on the 4th of July so much that I believe they had one yesterday too. And I hope that it went well for them. And I think that's just great. So if we're really talking about uh, transparency and, and money, the aggregate cost of whatever it was that you came up with, that's peanuts. But what is concerning is the time and the effort and the resources that has been expended by the city manager, the fire chief, this council, the FOIA officer, possibly the police chief and the assistant city manager, and far outweighs what this drive-by parade costs the city. And if we're really gonna get down to talking, you know, brass tacks about the money, then the last, let's talk about the fact that at the last council meeting that you presided as the mayor of this city, you thought it was okay and voted to buy a $185,000 parking lot that was in need of between 60 and $120,000 more in repair. And that was before the flood. And we all know that for the last decade, as you sat on this council, that you supported the wall litigation that cost taxpayers over $130,000. So if we're really talking about money here, then again, this parade is peanuts. And you know, if we're talking about the anonymous letter that you attached to the agenda when you demanded that this be put back on, well, that's already been read into the record. And again, is it appropriate to discuss an anonymous letter I don't, I don't really think so, but you know, maybe you know who wrote the letter and we can discuss it if that's the fact. Um, mm. You know, as far as I'm concerned, um, if we're gonna talk about whether it was appropriate and transparent, let's talk about the fact that Ms. Dahl, Councilwoman Dahl, Councilwoman Mead, you have not attended a council meeting here in person in the five months that I've sat on this board. Uh, I beg your pardon, I am here. I am here and I have been here at every single city council meeting, every single one. And I've done my whole head of a city council meeting. I don't wait until a city council meeting to read my agenda package. I get ready and I'm here and I am more here than you are. You don't know that. You have not shown your face here at a council meeting in the five months. The majority of this council now has been sitting. And Carolyn Dahl, Mayor, ex-Mayor Dahl, Councilwoman Dahl, excuse me if I got your name title wrong, uh, you know, you won't even show your face on the screen. And I guess if I had to act as importantly as you did at the July 1st meeting, I could understand why. But, you know, again, what are we talking about here? This was a nice gesture on the 4th of July that each one of us could have participated in. And, you know, people made a choice. And here we sit and we still talk about this. I think it's ridiculous. And you know, the fact that you all don't come here and, and participate in this council meeting with us as a body of government, but you go to other things, that's, that's inappropriate. I mean, you go to rallies on the courthouse steps that interest you. You go to other committee me meetings. I was expecting to see you miss me today when I walked into the nominating committee meeting. Surprised I didn't. You know, and then I opened the paper on Monday and, you know, Councilwoman Dahl, there you are at a 
a partisan political celebration at the wharf parking lot, front and center. And, you know, I didn't know anything about that. Nobody sent me an email telling me that you were having that celebration. Nobody sent me anything or the others either saying that you were even doing it. So why are we talking about this? This is a non-issue. It was a nice event that anybody was welcome to participate in. And here we continue to have this discussion. And that's okay. You, you had you had your say, Ms. Darby. That's I did not belt. attack any of you personally, but you chose because you won't answer the citizens' questions about this event. You chose to personally attack me and Ms. Me. I stand by my votes on both of those short-sighted uh, votes this council took on that wall and that parking lot. I care about people that use public transit and I care about American Shakespeare Center. And I care about people uh, having laws that apply equally to every citizen in this city. And if we don't have the rule of law, I mean, you're, you should be a law and order fan. I believe in the rule of law. So I would happily defend both of my votes on that. In terms of, I've been at every meeting. I have been at every meeting. And for you to try to somehow switch, and, and uh, did, you, did you think COVID was going to go away after the election? Well, it hasn't. And it's getting worse. And I am doing this for the good of my fellow citizens and neighbors and relatives. And you should be doing the same. And so we go back to this issue, Ms. Darby. Who made up the parade route? Madam Mayor. Vice Mayor Robertson. <clears throat> OK. Um, Ms. Dole. Uh, I'm going to make probably I'm this is going to be a little out of the ordinary and I'm probably going to make uh, uh, a motion even in a work session but I think it's gone on long enough you have said Miss, Miss Mead has said has accused us of standing on a courthouse steps back here a few weeks ago that we ex uh, had private or, or, or uh, private meetings, and furthermore, accepted money for political favors. That's a lie, point blank, bald face lie. Don't you ever accuse me of that again? I've never accepted money for anything else, and I don't plan or intend on doing it in the future. Miss Dole, y'all have accused us of being political in nature. And yet, right there you are, like as Miss Darby said, right there smack dab in the middle of, I counted them, 22 or 23 of your closest friends, all uh, uh, spaced out, I'm sure, very evenly of uh, six feet. There you go, Miss Mead. And wearing, wearing masks. And, wearing and, masks. And so therefore. Masks out of doors. It's, that's all right. That, that is all right. But I'm at the point where you have, you're doing this and you're making political statements. I'm glad for you that your candidate seems to win, has won, and is the president-elect. But having said that, I'm going to make a motion that we change our uh, meetings. And this is for city council and city council only, effective in the December meeting. From this day forward, Zoom meetings will be stopped. And Zoom meetings will be stopped. And you can be here, come in this building with your mask and be better socially distanced than you were here. You did it at the beginning of this pandemic. And then if such uh, things will go downhill or if there is a, uh, an emergency that gets much worse, we can then revisit it. We were going to revisit it anyway in January, but that is my motion. That is my motion that we stop Zoom meetings for city council, city council only, and you can come into this meeting and participate with all of us and be here. I know that's not what you want, but that's my motion. 
So we have a motion on the floor. Is there a second? Madam Mayor, I second. There's a second. Is there? I object. I mean, I, Council I, Member I, Holmes. I, guys, I'm sorry. I mean, you know, we're, we're looking like a bunch of idiots. We're arguing over stuff that, you know, I, I'm just, I'm embarrassed. I really am embarrassed. I, you know, I have some of the same concerns that Carolyn and, uh, and Brenda have about the parade. I wasn't told until eight o'clock in the morning. I mean, anybody knows me that if I'm up at eight o'clock in the morning, I haven't been to bed, you know? And, 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 and I was upset about that because people were implying that I wasn't patriotic and that's why I wasn't there. But I, I'm over all this. Let's put this stuff behind us. Mm -hmm. But also the demanding you. that somebody has to be here you know, with a mask, even with a mask on, I tell you right now, there are a lot of times I don't want to be here. I didn't almost come tonight. If it hadn't been for Rita Wilson's dedication, I wouldn't have came tonight because I don't feel that great tonight. You know, I don't think I've got COVID or nothing like that, but I just don't feel good. And I just, I just think that doing away with Zoom for city council is not a good thing to do right now. You know, and I, and I think for one thing, where are we going to sit? There's going to be two of us out there in the audience that, you know, where we, where you can't, I mean, how are we going to do the cameras? How are we going to do everything? I, I just don't, I don't think that that's a really good idea right now, you know, and, and, and I really wish that we could put all this stuff behind us and actually get back to governing, you know, because I talked, actually when it was taken off, I talked to Steve. Mr. Claffey, when it was taken off the agenda, I talked to him that day, told him I wanted to put this behind us. I wanted to get, you know, and I think if we had let it go run its course, it wouldn't have been such an issue then. But I mean, you know, we got to start working together. I just, I really, I'm really just really a little bit frustrated. I, and I, I agree, I Terry. And, 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 but it's all, it's all sides. It's all sides. It ain't just, it ain't one side or another. And it's just got to stop. Madam Mayor. Council Member Clavy. I agree with Terry. And he, I believe I was instrumental in uh, pulling off the agenda last time. The reason I pulled it off the agenda was I did not think it was appropriate that we were ha have unsubstantiated, unsigned letters, anonymous letters brought up and discussed in a meeting because I personally thought there was no benefit to the discussion. And it won't go away, so therefore we allowed it to stay on the agenda tonight, to my regret. And I'm not sure that it has gotten us anywhere. And there's opinions on either side of this thing that we can't seem to get over. And I'm with Terry. I've had it. We are embarrassing ourselves. It's been going on long enough. Let's stop it. Let's put this... July 4th event away. Mark, I ask you to withdraw your, your motion. Let's put this COVID thing about the emergency um, meeting in person away until we get to January and see what's going to happen. I mean, it, it's in line right now. We're, we're under emergency powers through the January 12th meeting, I believe, some date around there. Let's just let this lay and, and let's go back to being legislature. I didn't take this job for the abuse. I, I'm not getting any joy out of this meeting. Let's get on to the business of the city and let's get responsible and let's stop this. I, I, ask, I ask everybody just to say, let bygones be bygones and let's work together. I heard tonight some lovely discussions of Rita Wilson Amen. being a mentor and I'm new to this. This is my fifth month on this council. And I seriously feel like I haven't been mentored by anyone. No one's coming up to me and saying, Steve, let me show you the way. Let me help you out here. I've been thrown to the wolves and I've been attacked by the wolves. And, and it, it seems to be coming from all directions. So I've had it. Let's get past this. Let's step up to the business of the city and let's be done with it. That's all I have to say. Um, mm -hmm. Council Member Holmes. You know, um, I think, you know, I, I've, I've tried to, I got really upset 
at that meeting where y'all took it off the docket. And it was not because, it wasn't because y'all did that. I, well, it was because, but I did, I talked to you that day, Steve, and, 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 and you didn't give me any heads up, even though I said that I was going to, and that's, and that's the biggest thing is I don't, we're not communicating. You know, none of us are communicating with each other. And, and I think some of us are afraid to try because it just kind of deteriorates. You, you, you're afraid everything you say is going to be used against you, you know, and, I, and it's, 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 it's kind of hard, you know, and it, you know, I just, I just, I, I feel like that we, we need to try to do a little bit better. That's all I can say. I just, you know. Yeah. Vice Mayor Robertson. Terry, I, I totally agree with you. I totally agree with you. I want to work. But you've got to understand, I mean, I'll, I'll withdraw the motion, but you've got to understand on our very first day, I, I mean, as we were sworn in, Miss, Miss Dole read this wonderful little letter that evidently had been turned in the Stanton newspaper because it showed up, I mean, on the, online even before the meeting was over. And she proceeded to lambast us. She proceeded to call the mayor a racist. That's a wonderful way to start out. And and and, the, and, and then Miss Miss Mead has proceeded to take the the mayor and I to court, and that hopefully will be resolved tomorrow. I mean, this has been nothing but one lambasting after another. I mean, this is Carolyn Dull. Yes. I want to correct the record. I never said that Andrea Oaks was a racist, and I never turned it into the newspaper. That's a lie. If you if you if you're telling people that, that's a lie. I did not. And and when you said oh, uh, in 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 regards to the parade, you said oh well the th the other three poo pooed the idea and didn't want to come. That was a lie. And the Stanton Republican Committee has on there that we declined, and I never did. I was trying to be helpful when I said mm -hmm. it's going to be a problem. If you pick just certain neighborhoods and you, you don't inform everybody that you can't do it that way. And that's what I was politely trying to say when I asked that question. Did anybody respond to me? No. And that's how the communication has gone. When I, when you all were elected, I sent an email saying, I, you know, if you have any questions or anything, you know, let me know or contact me. I'll be happy to answer them. And you never responded. Ms. Darby never responded. And Steve Claffey said, thank you. Ms. Ms. Madam Mayor. Ms. Dole. I Vice Mayor Roberts. May, may, maybe it's just big misunderstanding, but but you, you keep on referring to the Republican committee. We, this is not the Republican committee up here. This are, we are your council mates. We are trying to serve the citizens of Stanton. And I know and I we can, have- I can tell you that if I saw a lie about one of you on social media, I would correct it. That's all I can say. And none of you have taken that uh, opportunity to correct the record. You let lies just go out there. You let people say, I was giving you the finger and, and that's why you had to tell me to stop smiling. That is a lie. If, they, if they're lying, uh, uh, you need to correct them. Or if you're telling them that, you're lying. I don't know which it is and it doesn't matter because it's not true. Ms. Dole, it, when it comes to that, I had one lady contact me, I had, and she said, is it true? And I said, do not print that particular item because I did not see Ms. Dole do that. So therefore, I cannot speak to that uh, accusation. So, you know, can we please just try, is it, can we just, can we work together? We're going to have political differences. Believe me, we are not going to agree. Every now and then, we have some seven-zero votes, but but Miss Dole, when it comes right down to with core values, we disagree. It believe me, 
this is I mean, we just went through this core value election. Let's go. Can we just try to work for the city? I, I don't. I, I don't know what you mean. What do you mean by that? That was Councilman Mendel. I don't understand what you're saying. What are you? What are you saying? There's Miss Miss Dole. There are a lot of things that we disagree with. Uh, uh, you know, in, in the uh, national scene. Um, and I'm not going to go into all of those. Locally, we, we really, we are trying to be fiscally conservative. We're trying to get to the point, we, we don't agree that spending 200 and some, almost $300,000 on a parking lot right now when we're going through the pandemic. We don't, we don't agree in that thing. I understand you said we're short-sighted, but we don't agree with that. We, you know, we, we're just simply trying, we have a conservative approach, which we're trying a, a, a more business-friendly type approach. So, and I understand you have a different approach and that's fine, absolutely. Like I said, that's what makes this country great. It's what makes this city great. But what's not fine is we can't have a discussion about it. We come in and we're blindsided by items added to the agenda with no discussion and a vote on a resolution we've never seen. And that's not how you work together. Understood. Okay, I'm, I'm going to speak at this point. This is uh, Mayor Andrea Oaks. Um, uh, Mayor, Mayor Oaks, I, this is Councilwoman Mead. I have, would, would like to have the opportunity to speak. Go right me. ahead, Councilwoman Mead. Thank you, I appreciate that. Uh, this, is, uh, this period of time since July 1st has been uh, 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 painful. Uh, I echo what Mr. Claffey has said. Uh, I echo what Mr. Holmes has said. In, and I'm, not, I'm a relative newcomer to city council as well. I've only been on city council for two years. But I can tell you that in the, the first two years that I was on city council, there were conversations among council people. There, there, were, there were no gotcha surprises. There, there, there were, you know, and, and Andrea may have, or Mayor Oaks may have a different perspective because she was often in the minority. But, but I will say that 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 the the, um, the, the starting from July first, uh, it, it was clear that there was coordination amongst the four of you that completely left out uh, the three of us, the three incumbent council members, and that has been very difficult to deal with. What 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 I want to see, and what my purpose in suing the mayor and vice mayor was, and I don't want to get into this litigation, but my purpose was, we need open, transparent government. We need to communicate. We need, we, 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 we can't have these sort of back, we can't give our citizens the impression that these decisions are being made in advance of city council meetings and without the participation of all members of city council. That, that is my goal. I want to have relationships with all seven, all six of my fellow council members, but I need that transparency. And that's my, that, that, that is my focus at this moment. Okay. Um, I'm going to speak now um, as mayor. Um, first off, I would like to say, as far as lies or untruths that are put out there, there have been no secret meetings, no secret meetings. Uh, and to answer um, Councilwoman Dole's question, I, uh, I do check my uh, email on a regular basis, probably to the point that I'm obsessed with checking it. Um, I can understand concerns on both sides. Um, I do understand the fact that we have two council members that do participate through Zoom. However, they are seen at other meetings and rallies uh, in person, and there's confusion there. Um, I can understand the confusion by the three council members, as mentioned, about items being brought up, uh, added to the agenda. Um, and I 
did have opportunities in which I was surprised when I was in the minority, I guess you could say, um, on the previous council concerning um, a couple of issues. I'm, I'm not going to get into to all of that. However, um, there appears to be, frankly, I think right now, tonight, we're at this crossroads. There appears to be um, a huge need for healing. And I'm hoping that we can come together and start working together and, and heal. Uh, I know that Mr. Rosenberg uh, in the future will be looking at a uh, date that will work for everyone for a retreat. And I'm hoping at this retreat that we can um, start to gel. Now, I'm not saying that we're going to reach a kumbaya moment, but um, I am hopeful that we can respectfully work together. Um, so those are my comments, and Mr. Rosenberg, you will be in the future looking at dates for um, a retreat. That is correct. Yes, that is correct, Madam Mayor. Okay. All right. Um, we are running short on time, so we have a motion and a second on the floor. I've, I've withdrawn it. All right. So um, Vice Mayor Robertson's withdrawn his motion. Um, Council Member Darby, do you withdraw your second? Yes, ma'am. Okay, all right, hopefully at this moment, this is the beginning of the healing process. Amen. Um, we are now on break. As mayor, I call this meeting of Stanton City Council to order. I note that this meeting is being broadcast over the city's cable channel and streamlined on the city's website so that members of the public may hear our meeting. The meeting is also being recorded. I ask the clerk of council to call the roll for confirmation of those council members present for today's meeting. Mayor Oaks. Here. Ms. Darby. Here. Mr. Holmes. Here. Mr. Claffey. Here. Vice Mayor Robertson. Here. Ms. Dahl. Here. Ms. Mead. Here. I have confirmed that all council members are present. Thank you. I ask that city manager Steve Rosenberg note the participation of any city officials or colleagues or anyone else during today's meeting by Zoom or telephone. Uh, Madam Mayor, uh, Council Members Mead and Dole are participating on the Zoom platform. And additionally, uh, for item A, which is a, concerns a special use permit for a t telecommunications facility, we have participating representatives of the applicant, including Bob Rydell, Sharon Weddell, and Tutti Hudgens, all participating on the Zoom platform. Okay, thank you. Please let me mention that notice reasonable under the circumstances of this meeting has been given to the public contemporaneously with the notice provided to members of city council. In addition to limited public seating in city hall, Access to this meeting has been provided to the public by audio feed on the city's cable channel and the city's website during public hearings towards the beginning of the meeting and matters from the public on council's agenda towards the end of the meeting. Public comments will be taken in person and by telephone. Members of the public who wish to participate in such matters by telephone at the approximate time may call 844-854-2222. And when prompted, enter the access code 619358 hashtag. Callers will be recognized in order. The public is reminded that public hearings and matters from the public is a time for counsel simply to listen to your comments. Each speaker will be limited to five minutes. Detailed instructions for public participation by telephone have been publicized over the course of the past week on the city's website and Facebook page and can be found now on the agenda for this meeting and on council's website at www.ci.stanton.va.us backslash government backslash city dash council. Also, let me highlight and have reflected in the meeting minutes that this meeting, although being conducted in person, is also being conducted by Zoom with virtual participation by certain members of city council given the catastrophic nature of the declared emergency and disaster related to the COVID-19 outbreak, which is part of the total circumstances makes it impractical or unsafe to assemble in a single location. The meeting is being held consistent with the City Council Ordinance 2020-04 regarding continuity of government, 
a copy of which can be found online at www.stanson.va.us backslash COGORD 2020-04 as extended by City Council Ordinance Number 2020-24. All right, I'm getting pretty good at that. <laughs> um, welcome everyone. Um, I would like to just point out that if you uh, come into the City Council uh, chambers, if you can wear your mask, if you walk around City Hall, please have your mask on. Um, if you'd like to come up to the podium to speak, you may remove your mask. We do have um, sanitizing wipes if you care to use them on the podium. Um, also, council members, if you can address the mayor, the mayor will address you. I want to make sure that everybody's uh, pointed out so our folks listening um, will know who all is speaking. Um, I'd also like to give special recognition to our school board member, Bob Boyle. Thank you for attending tonight. Uh, the next item on the agenda is the Pledge of Allegiance. If you care, please rise and join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, the next item on the agenda is the invocation moment of silence and tonight uh, council member darby yes thank you madam mayor uh, this evening i have asked uh, the reverend john k craft of bethany presbyterian church to join us and uh, give the invocation he will be doing a christian prayer and if you would like to join so join us please do so madam mayor members of council thank you for having me let us pray Gracious and eternal God, we thank you for this opportunity, this liberty, this freedom to gather in safety, to discuss what you would have us discern for the welfare of this city as you spoke to us through the prophet Jeremiah. Lord, through the power of your spirit, enter into the hearts of each person here as they are elected servant leaders to come together in unity for the benefit of this community that this community could be an example to the world of your love and your forgiveness and your grace. For it's in your name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next, under the mayor's report, um, I would like to read a proclamation concerning Small Business Saturday. City of Stanton, Virginia, Proclamation, Small Business Saturday, November 28, 2020. Whereas the City of Stanton, Virginia celebrates our local small businesses and the contribution they make to our local economy and community. And whereas the citizens of Stanton area support their local businesses and recognize that such local businesses create jobs, boost our local economy and preserve our neighborhoods. And whereas the city of Stanton, Virginia supports local businesses by among other initiatives and activities, having a downtown service district and partnering with the Stanton Downtown Development Association. And whereas the city of Stanton, Virginia joins with other localities in Virginia and across the nation in recognizing the importance of local businesses. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed by Stanton City Council that November 28, 2020 is hereby designated as Small Business Saturday. And the City of Stanton and the City Council urges residents of our Stanton community, our regional community, and communities across the country to support small businesses and merchants, merchants on Small Business Saturday and throughout the year. Adopted this 12th day of November, 2020, signed by Andrea W. Oaks, Mayor. And if Greg Beam, the executive director for the Stanton Downtown Development could um, approach the podium, I would like to present the proclamation to you, please. And would you care to say a few words, Mr. Beam? Okay. <laughs> Speech. Much. Thank you very much. Um, 
I have nothing prepared to say other than just thank you to the city of Stanton and Stanton City Council and Stanton City Government for continuing to support uh, Stanton downtown and our local businesses throughout the community. We really value all of that uh, support and collaboration this year as we have through all the past years as well. So thank you so much. Thank you, John. Thank you. And a proclamation to support shopping. Oh, I love it. This city's awesome. <laughs> So, so everybody get out and shop small businesses. Um, the next item on the agenda, I would like to once again recognize Greg Beam um, with the Stanton Downtown Development Association. Um, the city council will be having their third annual holiday tree lighting on November 30th at 530 uh, over next to the Gypsy Hill Park pool. And this year, the city council has chosen Mr. Greg Beam to light the tree to kick off the holiday season for the city of Stanton. So thank you, Mr. Greg Beam, for everything that you have done for the city this past year. You have been a champion um, throughout the flood process, uh, trying to um, help businesses reopen, keeping them opening, and uh, bringing in volunteers to help with the cleanup. I would just, the list goes on and on. So thank you very much. Um, also, before I forget, I would like to uh, wish everyone a very happy Thanksgiving. Uh, we will not be meeting uh, a second um, time in November because hopefully everybody will be spending their Thanksgiving with their family rather than having a city council meeting, <laughs> even though we might talk a lot of turkey up here, huh? <laughs> All right, you guys are a hard crowd. <laughs> Uh, so I just want to wish everyone in the city of Stanton a happy Thanksgiving. Um, one other item I wanted to mention on November 6th, I attended along with our city manager, Steve Rosenberg, the tree celebration at Stanton High School. This was held by the um, um, Shenandoah Green, the Stanton Legacy Tree Project. And Mr. Rosenberg, can you um, give a little insight on the um, Stanton Legacy Tree Project? Uh, Madam Mayor, it is a, a project being undertaken by Shenandoah Green, a local nonprofit uh, organization, and their uh, their goal is to plant a a single tree for each school aged child in the city of Stanton enrolled in the public school system. I believe, and so they have been partnering with. Um, the, the uh, Stanton City Schools, um, and that, that accounts, I think, for the chosen location for uh, last week's ceremony at Stanton High School. Yes, thank you. And um, I do have to recognize uh, the fact that this was um, lifted off the ground due to the efforts of Council Member Carolyn Dole. She was a, a strong advocate for this uh, program and it exists today because of her efforts. So thank you, Councilwoman Dahl. Um, the next item on the agenda is additional items by members of council. Are there any, um, okay, <laughs> council member Holmes. Oh, uh, this is uh, Terry Holmes. Uh, I don't know if any of you are aware or most of you are aware of it, but uh, there was a fire at the mission uh, in their kitchen uh, last uh, uh, Saturday or Sunday, but uh, uh, their kitchen, their kitchen's out of commission, and, and luckily we've got enough uh, people from churches and restaurants to volunteer to feed them through this week and into Monday. Hopefully their kitchen will be open. But if anybody's willing to donate any money or anything like that, would always come in handy. Uh, it's a lot easier to use money than it is to, to take canned goods and stuff to the mission. So uh, if anybody could help out, that would be great. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, Vice Mayor Robertson. Um, Mr. Rosenberg, this one is for you as I talk. Um, I just want basically uh, the city manager, and I think Mr. Johnson was here, but he may have left. Oh, he's there. Okay. Um, I just wanted basically to you know to fill in the rest of the city council members and 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 basically the public, our citizens. We had talked about uh, how, or I wanted to see if, if there was a way possible to schedule. Uh, downtown trash pickup on Wednesdays 
uh, specifically for a lot of our restaurants. Some of them I've expressed the, uh, an issue that you know they, they don't have trash pickup on Wednesday, so therefore they don't have an ability to set trash outside. So they're having to store that you know, food and everything inside their restaurant, uh, which sometimes can be a little smelly at times, maybe overnight. So, um, and then the next day they can get it out. So that, and then also to fill in where we stand with uh, the recycling program, because that's something that uh, that I was interested in as well. So if you could just, I know you said it's what we're doing, but just kind of fill in people or what's going on. All right, are there any additional Oh, did you want to respond to that, Mr. Rizzo? Well, I think that Vice Mayor Robertson was expecting a response. Okay. If, if yeah, I'm my correct. apologies. If you could fill it in, yeah, if, yes, please. So um, just uh, to remind council members that a couple of weeks ago, I shared with you by email that I had asked our new public works director, Jeff Johnston, to take a comprehensive look at the refuse and recycling program, which really has been operated in the same manner uh, since well before my arrival here in the city in 2013. Um, it's a different market uh, that we're in today in terms of refuse and recycling. Uh, we have a fresh set of eyes with Mr. Johnston and he's in the midst now of uh, conducting his review and we'll be coming forward with uh, some recommendations and Vice Mayor Robertson, I hope that at this point that he's reached out to you and had a conversation about your specific concerns. He has and we're, we're gonna set a thing, sit down and talk to each other. So look forward to it. Very good. So we so we will look forward to coming forward to council to share with you uh, the results of uh, Mr. Johnston's review. Um, I, I don't have a firm schedule for that, but we're working on it. Thank you, sir. Sounds good. Madam um, Mayor. Council Member Claffey. The nominations committee had an opportunity to meet this afternoon, and we would like to propose a motion um, to appoint Kara Flavin to, Flavin to the Youth Commission for a one-year term beginning November 13th, 2020, and expiring on November 12th, 2021, and also to reappoint Gregory Cook for a three-year term beginning November 13th, 2020, and expiring November 12th, 2023 on the Cable Television Commission. Okay, so we have a motion on the floor. It's coming from a committee, so we do not need a second, uh, but is there any further discussion? Mayor Oaks, this is Councilwoman Mead. Councilwoman Mead. I think uh, uh, the nominee for the Youth Commission is an excellent choice, having been uh, on that Youth Commission for a couple of years. Uh, she makes a great contribution, so I su support that. I would, uh, I would like to suggest that in future, when the nominations committee makes, uh, makes a motion, that the motions be separated um, uh, and that uh, motion for one person be made separate from another, um, whether or not it needs a second, uh, I'll, I'll just assume that it doesn't, but I would like to support that um, uh, going forward. There are times when I think one candidate is, uh, is exceptional and correct for a position, and there are other times I think when there, there merits more discussion and, uh, and a separate vote. So that's my request and suggestion. Okay, um, that has been the tradition of the council to um, handle it in that manner. However, uh, you have brought up a very good point. Uh, you may support one candidate, but not another. Um, so that is something we can certainly look into. So, Thank you. Mr. Rosenberg, if you can um, consider that in the future, we would appreciate it um, as far as a suggestion for the nominating committee, which all members are here. So if you can just make a note um, and the nominating committee can discuss it at their next meeting. All right, are there- We got a motion. Yeah, no, I was gonna say, are there any other um, comments? I would like to say that I've had the opportunity to work with, um, with Greg Cook and he is um, an excellent choice. He's very professional and he has the best sense of humor. Um, he never takes anything um, too heavy. He's, um, he knows how to laugh at himself, but he gets the uh, work done. So I will be supporting uh, this motion. All right, with that said, um, Ms. Smith, please call the roll. Ms. Darby. Aye. Ms. Dull. Aye. Mayor Oaks. Aye. Ms. Mead. Aye. Mr. Claffey. Aye. Vice Mayor Robertson. Aye. Mr. Holmes. Aye. Motion carries.
All right, great. Um, we can notify the, um, the candidates to let them know that um, we are very honored to have them serve. All right, so the next item on the agenda, uh, is, were there any other items by council members? Okay, hearing none. The next item on the agenda is the approval of minutes. I'll entertain a motion to approve the work session and regular meeting minutes of October 22nd, 2020. Eric. Council Member Holmes. Uh, this is Terry Holmes. I move to approve the work, I mean, the regular meeting agenda as presented. Do we need to also touch on the uh, regular meeting? The work session and the regular meeting as it uh, was presented. Do we need to talk about the special meeting? Uh, the meeting? All right, so there's a motion on the floor for the work session and regular meeting minutes of October 22nd, uh, 2020. Is there a second? Second. All right, so we have a second to approve the minutes. Any further discussion? Hearing none, Ms. Smith, please call the roll. Vice Mayor Robertson. Aye. Mr. Holmes. Aye. Ms. Darby. Aye. Ms. Dull. Aye. Mayor Oaks. Aye. Ms. Mead. Aye. Mr. Claffey. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. Now, uh, uh, oh, okay. <laughs> Did you need something? No, nope. keep rolling. Uh, after, yeah, okay. I, I want to comment on the next set of minutes. Okay, we'll do that. All right, uh, the next motion um, I'll entertain is for the special meeting of October 29th, 2020. And Mr. Rosenberg, you would like to make a comment. Uh, yes, Madam Mayor, I just want to remind council members or call to the attention of council members that earlier today I sent uh, to you all some revisions to the minutes for this special meeting. Um, and if you all haven't had a chance to see that, I'm happy to read to you or explain to you what the revisions were. Their purpose was to more closely conform the minutes to the, to the actual notice of the special meeting. Um, and can you go ahead and review that just so um, sure. everybody can hear it? Sure. So um, the... Um, and... Um, so the minutes as they were originally prepared and included in your agenda package um, introduced a list of names of individuals um, taking one view of the issue and taking another view of the issue. And the f introductory phrasing before those lists of names spoke about uh, supporting Scanton adopting a resolution designating itself as a sanctuary city. And as you all will recall, the notice of the public hearing was broader than that. It did not, in fact, it didn't use those words sanctuary city at all in the notice of public hearing. It was a broader notice that invited comment about the Second Amendment. And so the revisions to the minutes basically are intended to track the more broad, broadly stated phrasing that was in the notice. And so um, it now, the minutes read on line 83, Mayor Oaks opened the public hearing and it now reads, speaking in opposition to city council action concerning protection against infringement of rights under the second amendment whether in the form of a sanctuary designation or some other form were, and then the names are listed. And then the, uh, before the list of folks taking the opposite view, it says speaking in support of city council action concerning protection against infringement of rights under the second amendment, whether in the form of a sanctuary designation or some other form were and then the names are listed. So again, it's the, the purpose was to make it clear that the public hearing was was not just about a designation as a sanctuary city, but it was a broader discussion or a, a broader public hearing about the Second Amendment generally. And so that was what I've attempted to capture in the revisions to the minutes and apologies for not having included it in that way in your package in the first place. Okay, um, if the council is in agreement with the 
proposed changes, I'll entertain a motion to approve the special meeting minutes of October 29th, 2020 with said changes. Mayor Oaks, this is Councilwoman Mead. Councilwoman Mead. I move to approve the minutes of the special, uh, the Stanton City Council public hearing of October 29th. Uh, uh, as amended by Mr. Rosenberg's uh, comments, lines 85 through 87, and lines 119 through 121. Okay, thank you. We have a motion on the floor. Is there a second? A second. Council Member Holmes seconds. Any further discussion? Hearing none, Ms. Smith, please call the roll. Mr. Holmes. Aye. Ms. Darby. Aye. Ms. Dahl. Aye. Mayor Oaks. Aye. Ms. Mead? Aye. Mr. Claffey? Aye. Vice Mayor Robertson? Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. All right, that takes us to the regular meeting, which is item A, a public hearing and consideration of a request by Jacobs Communication LLC on behalf of AT&T for a special use permit for 2619 Locust Avenue under the provisions of SCC 18.185 Telecommunications Facilities of Title 18 Zoning of the Stanton City Code. Okay, Mr. Rosenberg. Madam Mayor, Rodney Rhodes, the City Senior Planner will present this item. Good evening, Mayor Oak, City Council members. Before you tonight is an application from Jacobs Communications for a special use permit in order to construct a 145 foot monopole telecommunications tower and 150 by 150 equipment compound area at 2619 Locust Avenue, which will replace an existing 135 foot guide wire tower at the same location, um, which the owner has noted is not adequate to handle upgraded equipment that is planned for this facility. Um, this is um, adjacent to the Van Fossen self-storage facility. Uh, I've actually driven by it in my first six months in the city and never saw it um, in my daily commute. Um, the property is zoned industrial and special, uh, it's communication towers uh, require a special use permit in all zoning districts. Uh, the applicants submitted a very thorough and complete application, which has been reviewed by city staff, various divisions and departments and we saw no issues with the proposal. Um, and it meets zoning requirements that are fairly extensive for communications towers and are outlined in the zoning ordinance. It also meets and, or, and exceeds the setback requirements of the zoning ordinance. It's approximately 160 feet from the nearest residential st structure and almost 500 feet uh, from the nearest public street. The proposal is also consistent with the zoning ordinance goal of encouraging the placement of telecommunication towers in non-residential areas and in areas where the adverse impacts on the city are minimal and replacing an older guy wire tower with a modern monopole telecommunications tower um, with co-locating capability is considered an improvement. At the Planning Commission's um, public hearing on September 17th, 2020, uh, no one spoke in opposition to this request. I would note that no one has either called up or sent emails or letters in opposition to this request um, based on that public notification and the public notification for tonight's public hearing. And at the conclusion of the public hearing in September, the Planning Commission on a 5-0 vote um, recommended um, uh, approval of special use permits. I'd be glad to answer any questions you have at this time or after you conduct a public hearing. Um, as um, um, Mr. Rosenberg noted, there are several people representing um, the application uh, applicant that are on the Zoom platform. Okay. All right. Are there any questions for Mr. Rhodes from um, Council just, Member Holmes? I just have one. Uh, uh, Mr. Rhodes, when you say co-locating, that means that other, uh, like other uh, phone companies could use the tower. Th that is correct. As a requirement of a zoning ordinance that there be uh, uh, space available for three, at least three um, providers. Mayor Oaks, this is Councilwoman Mead. Councilwoman Mead. Um, I, I, this is just a, 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 what's the difference between a, I know what a monopole is, it's one pole. What's a guide wire? What, what does that mean? It's a lattice type structure that is supported by wires that 
um, I guess, basically go from the top all the way down to the bottom. So there's multiple wires that um, support that. It, it's an older style. Um, the monopole is what's currently preferred in that industry. Thanks. Okay. All right, we're gonna go ahead and move on to item number B for staff review, Mr. Rosenberg. Uh, yes, and, and Madam Mayor, just for the uh, public's benefit, um, and the benefit of the applicant on item A. Um, and, and, and perhaps, um, Madam Mayor, it would be, uh, well. Um, Let's stick just, to the just plan, to Steve. Just, yeah, just to clarify, um, we're going to cover item A, B, and C before we conduct public hearings on any of them, um, given the fact that we have callers dialing in to participate in the public hearings. It's difficult to manage those one by one. Right. And so um, the applicant on item A will have an opportunity to comment on their application right. when we open the public hearing on items A, B, and C. Right. So with that said, item B um, um, is uh, the introduction and public hearing of an ordinance to amend the FY 2021 budget for the city of Stanton by adding budget amendment number four. And uh, Phil Trayer, the city's chief finance officer will present uh, this item and then after his presentation it will be appropriate for council to consider a motion. That is correct and thank you for the clarification. All right, um, Mr. Trayer. Okay, it's good to be back. Madam Mayor, members of council, it's a pleasure to be back. Tonight we are here to formally introduce budget amendment number four. Budget amendment number four is this year's major budget amendment which captures prior year carryover, grant award true ups, new grant awards, donations, and insurance recoveries. Budget number four totals twelve million nine hundred twenty-three thousand. Does require a public hearing. City portion is nine million nine hundred fifteen thousand. The school portion is three million eight thousand. Details of the budget amendment have been summarized in a packet and were reviewed during the work session. It includes the following: five point one million dollars in general fund provisions, two point five million for CIP fund appropriations, one million to the debt service sinking fund. 1,020,000 for community development, $248,000 to Blue Ridge Court Services Fund, $27,500 to the Grants Fund, $8,600 to the Water Fund, $1,879,000 to the Education Fund, $1,053,000 to the School CIP, $60,000 to the School Cafeteria Fund, and $15,000 to the School State Operator Program Fund. City Manager recommends the introduction public hearing, which is scheduled for this evening, was properly advertised. Thank you. Are there any questions for Mr. Trey or from council members? All right. Hearing none, we will move on to item number C for staff update. Madam Mayor, may I suggest that you entertain a motion on item B before we move oh, on? Th thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you for the point of clarification. Okay. Um, so this... Um, requires a motion, but it's just for an introduction of the ordinance. So I will entertain a motion for item B. Mayor Oates, this is Councilwoman Mead. Councilwoman Mead. I move to introduce an ordinance amending the fiscal year 2021 budget by adding budget amendment number four, totaling $12,923,776, and that council conduct a public hearing of the ordinance. Thank you. We have a motion on the floor. Is there a second? Second. All right. We have a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, Ms. Smith, please call the roll. Vice Mayor Robertson? Aye. Ms. Mead? Aye. Mr. Holmes? Aye. Mr. Claffey? Aye. Ms. Dull? Aye. Ms. Darby? Aye. Mayor Oaks? Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. Now we'll move on for um, staff update concerning item number C, a discussion introduction and public hearing of ordinance regarding updates to section 6.05.010 of chapter 6.05 of title six animals and fowl. Mr. Rosenberg. Madam Mayor, Shane Ayers, one of our two animal control officers will present this item. And again, after his presentation, it would be appropriate for council to consider a motion. Thank you. Good morning, uh, good evening council members. Um, I just have a few housekeeping issues, really, for the uh, Chapter 6, Animals and Fowl. The, um, all of it in involves the definitions 
the General Assembly did an update this year on um, adequate space, adequate shelter, companion animal, those three things. We mirror the same code in city code, so we need to update ours to match the state code, um, the exact definition. The other minor change is um, we have a wild and exotic animal code. Um, we redid the definition uh, for that section. Currently, um, there were some exemptions for some animals. We went to the pet stores and tried to identify which animals needed to be added to the exemption. The list was real long. So we narrowed it down to animals that are permitted to be sold within the city and shorten the definition down where it'd be easy, easily, easily read. Are snakes on that list? I'm sure there is some at some point, <laughs> yes. All right, um, thank you. Are there any questions? Okay, hearing none, I will entertain a motion um, for the introduction of an ordinance regarding the updates concerning um, the section 6.05.010 of chapter 6.05 of title six, animals and fowl. Mayor Oaks. Council Member Holmes. Uh, I move to introduce the proposed ordinance amending section 6.05.010 definitions of chapter 6.05 in general of title six, animal and fowl to align with changes to the code of Virginia as enacted by the General Assembly to amend the definition of wild or exotic animals and to conduct a public hearing of the ordinance. All right, thank you. Is there a second? Madam Mayor, I second. Councilman Claffey seconds. Uh, any further discussion? I'm hearing none. Ms. Smith, please call the roll. Mayor Oaks. Aye. Ms. Mead. Ms. Mead. Oh, Aye. There you go. Mr. Claffey? Aye. Vice Mayor Robertson? Aye. Mr. Holmes? Aye. Ms. Darby? Aye. Ms. Dull? Aye. Motion carries. All right, thank you. Now we will go back and have one public hearing on all three items, item A, B, and C. So I'll bang the gavel, and if you would care to speak for or against any one of these um, action items, please feel free. And then I will bang the gavel to close the, um, the public hearing out, and we will go back and vote on item A. Do I have it down right, Mr. Rosenberg? You do, Madam Mayor. Um, uh, if I may suggest that perhaps the first speaker during the public hearing be invited to be the representative of the applicant on item A, which is the special use permit, so that council can hear from that party um, and, and we make sure that they have the opportunity to uh, support their application. Absolutely. Okay. All right. The public hearing is now open. Mr. Um, I'm sorry. Good evening, Madam Mayor and Council Members. Um, my name is Tootie Hudgens. I'm from Jacobs Engineering. We rep I represent Bob Riddle, the tower owner, and AT&T. Um, I'm here tonight to request your approval for the proposed tower replacement. Basically, as um, Mr. Rhodes uh, reviewed with you, the existing tower can no longer safely and structurally support the equipment needed for AT&T's equipment. So therefore we are proposing this uh, to replace the tower and to bring the uh, new proposed tower into compliance with all the new ordinances. Uh, one thing I did want to point out is AT&T has the nationwide contract for FirstNet, which is the nationwide first responder network. And that is one reason for the upgrade on this tower equipment to provide that, which will serve your city and surrounding areas for first responders. Thank you. And please consider your approval. All right. Are there any questions? Okay. Uh, would anyone else through Zoom like to speak concerning the public hearing? Mr. Rosenberg. Uh, I, I believe that that um, is it for the applicant on the special use permit. Um, before we go to the callers, let me just again, it's been a while, remind the public that if you wish to participate in the public hearing, you can dial 844-854-2222 and when prompted, enter the access code for the meeting 619-358-POUND. And these instructions can be found on the, uh, on the city council website. Um, 
uh, which is a, a sub page of the city's main web page. Uh, is the caller whose number ends in zero one on the line? Is the caller whose number ends in zero one on the line? Let's move to the next caller. Is the caller whose number ends in zero six on the line? Hello? Well, we had two callers on the line, Madam Mayor, but it doesn't appear that either of them uh, wish to participate. So that's it for uh, callers for the public hearings. Okay. All right. Um, we'll accept any comments from um, our citizens that are here in person. Good evening, Jasmine Brooks, 930 Sudbury Street, Stanton, Virginia, 24401. I am here to uh, ask for an update on the My Brothers and Sisters Keeper Initiative. I was uh, given a message um, maybe a couple of weeks ago that it would be on the agenda for tonight. Um, and so I'm just here for a follow up. Okay, um, Ms. Brooks, this is um, actually a public hearing on uh, items My A, bad. B, and C. Thank no, no, that's you. fine. But just um, hang out and uh, we'll love to hear your comments um, under matters from the public, please. Gotcha. So please um, stay with us. All right. Um, Madam Mayor, we do have another oh. call um, in the queue. Is the caller whose number ends in 22 on the line? Um, is this not the matters from the public? Uh, you're calling for matters from the public? Yeah. Okay, we'll put you back in the queue and come back to you later in the meeting. Thank you. Okay. Okay. It looks like I can close the public hearing out. The public hearing is now closed. I'll entertain a motion for item A. Madam Mayor. Um, council Member Clappy. I move that the council approve the special use permit for 2619 Locust Avenue as recommended by the Planning Commission. All right. So we have a motion on the floor. Is there a second? A second. Hearing. All right, uh, Council Member Holmes has seconded. Any further discussion? Hearing none, Ms. Smith, please call the roll. Ms. Darby? Aye. Ms. Dahl? Aye. Mayor Oaks? Aye. Ms. Mead? Aye. Mr. Claffey? Aye. Vice Mayor Robertson? Aye. Mr. Holmes? Aye. Motion carries. All right, thank you. And thank you to everyone for your patience. Um, that takes us on to item number D an introduction of ordinance to appropriate an additional 20% of FY 2021's adopted budget. Mr. Rosenberg. Madam Mayor, Phil Trayer, the city's chief finance officer will present this item and he will also provide the background to you, which you will recall we skipped during the work session in order to remain on schedule. So uh, Mr. Trayer will we'll, uh, cover that territory for you now. Thank you, Mr. Rosenberg. Thank you. Madam Mayor, members of the council, tonight we have an additional budget appropriation request on our FY 2021 adopted budget. As you're aware, in response to the uncertainty of the pandemic, the city's budget was appropriated at a level of 60% to allow staff to assess the impact the pandemic was having on our revenue as the fiscal year unfolded. To date, we are showing local revenues exceeding budget projections to feel comfortable with appropriating an additional 20% at this time bringing the total FY21 budget appropriation up to 80% or $91,432,000. Staff's intent is to review the revenue again in another 90 to 120 days before recommending final appropriation of the FY2021 budget. This appropriation request equals $22,858,000 and does not require a public hearing as one was held during the budgeting process for the full budget amount. The city portion of this budget appropriation is 15,417,000. The school portion is 7,740,000. Details have been summarized in your packet and includes the following. General fund, 11,274,000. 
Habitat Service, 968,000. Blue Ridge Court Services, 218,000. Water Fund, 1,009,000. Sewer Fund, 912,000. Parking Fund, 108,000. Stormwater Fund, 258,000. Environmental Fund, 666,000. Total City Appropriation, 15,417,000. Education Fund, 6,494,000. Cafeteria Fund, 294,000. Textbook Fund, 55,000. State Operator Program, 596,000. Total Appropriation Education, 7,440,000. Combined Appropriation, 22,858,000. The ordinance does not require a vote this evening and will be brought back before you on December 10th, 2020. Okay, all right, thank you. All right, but we need, do need a vote on the uh, introduction of the ordinance. So I'll entertain a motion. Madam Mayor. Council Member Darby. I move to introduce an ordinance amending the fiscal year 2021 budget by adding an additional 20% of the FY 2021 adopted budget in an amount equal to 22,858,124. There's a motion on the floor. Is there a second? Madam Mayor. Um, sorry. Um, Holmes, sorry. Um, Council Member Holmes, are you second it? Okay, so Council Member Holmes has second. Any okay. further discussion? I'm hearing none. Ms. Smith, please call the roll. Ms. Mead? Aye. Mr. Claffey? Aye. Ms. Dole? Aye. Vice Mayor Robertson? Aye. Mr. Holmes? Aye. Ms. Darby? Aye. Mayor Oaks? Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. All right, the next item is item E, a discussion and consideration of a final plat for Winbrook Subdivision Section 4. Mr. Rosenberg. Madam Mayor Rodney Rhodes, the city senior planner will present this item. Hi. Welcome. Thank you. Mayor Oak, City Council members. Winbrook is a single family residential development located on New Hope Road. Back in 2003, City Council approved the rezoning of this property to R2 low density residential district conditional. And at that same time, Council approved the preliminary plat um, creating 76 single family lots. Um, over the course of the past 15 years or so, um, 48 lots um, received approval for final plats and they have been developed. At this point, the developer is asking for uh, approval of section four, which is 15 additional lots. Um, and this pr proposed development, some of these lots are on a street that has not been completed. Therefore, the city is requesting that a bond be um, issued in order to cover the cost of those. Also the um, facility fees uh, would need to be paid. Uh, I would note the comprehensive plan 2018 to 2040 um, designates this as low density residential. So therefore this development complies or is in conformance with that designation. And the final plat is also in conformance with the approved preliminary plat from 2003 and all the requirements of the zoning and subdivision ordinance. The plan commission conducted a, a review of this final plat on October 15, 2020. And on a five to zero vote, uh, unanimously recommended approval of the final plant with several conditions. One is that the facility fees uh, shall be paid, a bond shall be posted for the improved uh, necessary infrastructure improvements, and that some minor uh, survey issues be um, resolved on a, on a final plant, a revised plant, and that the city's engineer um, perform a site distance evaluation along New Hope Road um, to, and I would note that all four of those conditions have been met. Uh, the facility fees have been paid, a bond has been posted, uh, the, the minor surveying issues have been addressed, and the city engineer has looked at this and is requesting that um, there be some additional grading um, along New Hope Road to improve um, site distances, and that will be um, done before issuance of any building permits. I'll be glad to answer any questions you have at this time. Uh, land surveyor, surveyor Daniel Hansen of Balser Associates is here in attendance if you have any questions of him. All right, are there any questions? Mayor Oaks, this is Councilwoman Mead. Councilwoman Mead. 
Uh, Mr. Rhodes, what is a site distance evaluation? The, the issue that the planning commission brought up, it was concerned about these additional driveways uh, that would be on New Hope Road and to make sure that there was good sight distance so that you know, cars pulling out of a, a driveway could see down the road um, and safely maneuver out of their driveway. And the city engineer satisfied that the configuration of the driveways would not be, would not present issues? Uh, That's correct, with, with a little additional grading to be done. There's a null there that um, the city engineer said that needs to be graded down to improve that site distance. Thank you. All right, are there any additional questions or comments? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion. This is Councilwoman Mead. Councilwoman Mead. I move that Council approve the final plat for Winbrook se Section 4 as recommended by the Planning Commission. All right, so we have a motion on the floor. Is there a second? Second. All right, Vice Mayor Robertson is second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, Ms. Smith, please call the roll. Mayor Oaks? Aye. Vice Mayor Robertson? Aye. Ms. Mead? Aye. Mr. Holmes? Aye. Mr. Claffey? Aye. Ms. Dole? Aye. Ms. Darby? Aye. Motion carries. All right, thank you. The next item is item number four, a discussion and consideration of resolution to amend the City of Stanton Cafeteria Plan to permit the reimbursement of over-the-counter medical products without a prescription in accordance with the CARES Act. Uh, Mr. Rosenberg. Madam Mayor, John Venn, the City's Chief Human Resources Officer, will present this item. Welcome back. <laughs> Madam Mayor, members of Council, uh, the City of Stanton sponsors a cafeteria plan which allows eligible employees to choose from a menu of different benefits to suit their needs and pay for those benefits with pre-tax dollars. This would be our HSA and FSA accounts that employees can uh, voluntarily participate in. Uh, prior to the passing of the CARES Act, uh, the ACA, the Affordable Care Act, required employees to obtain a prescription in order to be reimbursed for non-prescription over-the-counter drugs and medicines. With the passing of the CARES Act, the requirement for a prescription for over-the-counter drugs and medicines is eliminated and menstrual care products purchased on or after January 1 of 2020 are now reimbursable through a health FSA and HSA. This evening, we're recommending that City Council adopt the resolution amending the City of Stanton's cafeteria plan, uh, therefore eliminating the prescription requirement for the over-the-counter medications and to allow reimbursement of menstrual products from the health FSA and HSA. And I would be more than happy to answer any questions about this. And I would say when this happened, there was uh, a lot of folks were, were happy with this. Certainly. Um, are there any questions? Yeah, just, Council Member Holmes. Uh, Mr. Van, is this just like cold medicine and stuff Yes, like that, that is correct. So you can purchase ibuprofen. Yes, any, that is correct. Any, any of that stuff. Yes. And it's retroactive, what well, went retroactive to January 1 of 2020. Oh. That, and that sounds great. This is Councilwoman Mead. Councilwoman Mead. Not to belabor any, uh, the point or anything, but that includes vitamins, tampons, sanitary pads, anything that uh, of that nature. I believe I don't have the entire list uh, in front of me, but it does allow for a significant number of over-the-counter products. Okay. All right. Any additional comments? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion. Mayor Oaks. Council Member Holmes. I move that council, City Council adopt the resolution that amended the City of Stanton's cafeteria plan established under Code 1.125 of the Internal Revenue Code of 1986 to conform with the requirements of the CARE Act. All right, we have a motion on the floor. Is there a second? Madam Mayor, I'll second. Vice Mayor Roberts, um, Robertson seconds. Any further discussion? Hearing none, Ms. Smith, please call the roll. Vice Mayor Robertson? Aye. Ms. Mead? Aye. Mr. Holmes? Aye. Mr. Claffey? Aye. Ms. Dull? Aye. Mayor Oaks? Aye. Ms. Darby? Aye. Motion carries. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so the next item matters from the city manager, Mr. Rosenberg. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I have one item before I share that with council. Um, matters from the public is next. So let me again remind 
the public that to participate in matters from the public, you may dial 844-854-2222. And when prompted, enter the access code for the meeting, 619-358-POUND. These instructions can also be found on the city council webpage. Uh, the, the one item that I'd like to share with council members um, concerns the dedication of council chambers in, in honor of Rita Wilson. Um, uh, even on Zoom, you could see how touched her daughters were by the gesture made by council. Um, in the video, you saw um, some footage of what was a private family uh, mm -hmm. recognition or dedication ceremony that was here. And uh, I want to make sure that council members know that that was handled um, by Assistant City Manager Leslie Beauregard, um, as have all of the arrangements um, uh, in connection with the, the um, ceremonies that have been held. And uh, so today, um, Ms. Beauregard received, received a delivery of flowers in the office. Oh. And uh, Morgan Pretty Smith nice. and I wanted to know, was it her anniversary, <laughs> her birthday. Her birthday? You know, what was the occasion? And she professed to have no knowledge. And she opened the card. And it was a thank you from uh, the Rita Wilson family awesome. oh, for great. the work that she had done in connection with um, all of these ceremonies. So uh, I just wanted to publicly thank Leslie for her efforts, which obviously uh, contributed to um, the good feelings that uh, Ms. Wilson's family now has uh, from the dedication. Thank you. Job That's well great. done, Leslie. Way to go, Leslie. Yeah, thank you, Ms. Beauregard. Um, and what a class act, um, the Wilson family. They truly are. Yeah. I have truly enjoyed getting to know them, and I wish I had known Rita Wilson. Um, I was telling somebody earlier, I would have forced her to be my mentor. <laughs> so, she would have loved it. I truly have enjoyed getting to know their family. So I, thank you. I'm so glad I got to work on this project. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Um, it takes us to matters from the public. All right. Ms. Brooks, would you like to um, address the... Uh, um, please state your name, your address. You have five minutes to speak. And I'm going to go ahead and let Ms. Brooks uh, speak first because um, we um, already have a, a hint of what you would like to discuss. Absolutely. Jasmine Brooks, 930 Sudbury Street, Stanton, Virginia, 24401. Just here for an update on the My Brothers and Sisters Keeper initial uh, initiative proposal uh, that was given three months ago uh, because we were told that we would get an update and we haven't gotten one uh, since that time and that it would be on the agenda today and it wasn't on the agenda today. So we're just here for an update. Okay. Uh, I normally do not uh, engage in conversation under matters from the public. However, I will tell you, uh, I was not aware that um, that it was planned to be on the agenda for the month of November. However, um, Mr. Rosenberg, if you could please uh, give Ms. Brooks my phone number, I would like to discuss this matter further with you. And um, um, I, I need uh, to pick your brain, your expertise. Um, I would like to um, get some additional information from you. Sure thing. So if you can call me and we can set up a meeting. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Brooks. Also, Ms. Brooks, I'm sorry, it's Terry Holmes. Uh, you know that uh, the school system is also uh, uh, doing a project uh, 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 that's kind of similar to this, I think. So uh, we met with them as well. The distinction, though, is that there's there's a component of my brothers and sisters keeper that falls within the school board, which which I mentioned the first time we did the presentation that there's a component that falls within the school board's um, scope of work, and there's a component that falls under the city council scope of work. And so what we're asking okay. you all to do falls under your scope of work solely and, and distinctly different from what the school board is doing. Thank you. Well, we will get together, so thank you. All right, is there anyone else? Um, well, let's go ahead and... Um, I tell you what, while you're doing that, um, Mr. Rosenberg, I'll um, go ahead and accept um, comments uh, from the audience. So if any citizen would like to make a comment, um, please feel free. Yeah. 
Yes, my name is Baldwin Jennings, 332 Sharon Lane, Stanton, Virginia. Uh, back to the 4th of July parade, I, I, I don't understand how come our ex-mayor uh, is all upset about it. Uh, I was notified about the day or maybe a day or day and a half before it happened. And so, I, you know, I definitely got my, ran my car through the car wash and, and I was down there for to represent the veterans who participated in this thing. And uh, the 4th of July is, is, should be celebrated. And, uh, and I, I don't know what all the fuss is about. But anyway, a tour stand, it went all over stand. Matter of fact, back in places I hadn't been for years, and I didn't realize it filled up like it was. But the city, of Fort, for your information, though, the city was well covered. And I, the kids were out there uh, blowing their horns and uh, waving at us and everything. They, and they was well appreciated. So uh, I think if I was you, I'd drop the subject to forget about it. The next time, how about seeing about getting down here and here with the rest of the city council instead of sitting home being hiding behind you. Uh, they ask her, where are you hiding behind? So get down here and attend the meetings. Thank you. Mayor Oaks, this is Councilwoman Mead. Yes. I, I take exception to the speaker singling out Carolyn Dahl specifically. That, that is not appropriate. And your instructions to folks who are making comments is not to single out city council members individually. Uh, Mr. Jennings, um, I I'll address. Okay. Um, that is true. We do request that you um, address the council as a whole rather than individual members. However, um, I have been informed that I cannot stop someone from uh, addressing their concerns uh, due to their First Amendment rights. Um, however, we would appreciate it if you would, uh, in the future, please address the council as a whole. So thank you. Um, is there anyone else that would like to address the council from the um, audience? Good evening. Uh, my name is Tim Jordan, uh, 1609 Lee Highway, Fort Defiance, Virginia. Um, Madam Mayor and members of City Council, thank you for your time and leadership. Um, I have been in communication with my group, uh, with the EDA in the past year, trying to acquire several uh, buildings at Stanton Crossing. And um, we gave a presentation before City Council earlier this spring before the pandemic started. Uh, it was well received and uh, we have uh, been in communication with the EDA for the past nine months trying to work out a deal. Uh, we have a very innovative concept that's going to bring uh, business to the city of Stanton and uh, really unite both our agricultural community with the city and bring in tourism and additional uh, revenue to the city of Stanton. Uh, we would like to request that you reconsider EDA's recommendation to demolish all of the buildings at Stanton Crossing, and in particular, uh, our buildings that we are interested in. If you would like to speak with me individually further or our group, we would be happy to come in and give us another presentation to the city council and uh, describe our project for you. Thank you. All right, thank you. All right, anyone else wishing to speak from the audience? Hi, welcome. Hello, thank you for letting me speak this evening, Madam Mayor. Um, my name is Frances Fairfield, 118 Thorn Rose Avenue, Stanton. And I wanted to say Rita Wilson was a wonderful lady. She worked sometimes with my husband through the Valley Program for the Aging, and she was a great lady. I'm glad she's being honored. Um, tonight's uh, November discussion in the work session of the 4th of July Parade our town July parade, and it was a discussion tonight on November the 12th, five months later. I thought, okay, surely they're discussing a next year parade, a 2021 year, how big it will be and fantastic and fun it will be, a 2021 COVID-free fantastic parade. No, no, no. They're dwelling on the past the past 4th of July parade. So how can people stop dwelling on the past? I looked it up on Google to help me understand, and I will share some of that with you. Try to learn from the past. 
stop pointing fingers, focus on present tasks, disconnect for a while, make new memories. That's a good one, make new memories. I saw where a few council members did just that. There was a parade or a celebration of sort on last Saturday for the new president. I saw the news leader had some new pictures. I saw all that announcement after it had happened. It, I was not invited and I was at a celebration of life for my state trooper friend and my telephone was off. I received no timely message of invitation. Would I have liked to attend a parade celebration on November the 7th? Sure, shoulder to shoulder, mask on, just enjoying people instead of home in front of my Zoom camera screen with my eighth grade niece I'm helping with virtual learning. But am I gonna dwell on that I missed that president celebration? No, I realize that dwelling on the past doesn't change a thing. It's done, it's gone, it's over, let it go. I'm looking forward to the future, the future of Stanton. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to address the council? Uh, if not, Mr. Rosenberg. Yes, we have two callers. Is the caller whose number ends in 06 on the line? Let's move to the next call. Is the caller Hello. whose number ends in two? Yes, uh, please state your name and yes. address and address your comments to council. My name is Suzanne Fisher. I live at Waverly Green in Stanton. And I'm calling to express my appreciation to the registrar of elections in the city and all of her staff. Um, I was really grateful that this year we had early voting. It was very timely um, because of the coronavirus, but I think it's a good idea in general. I plan to vote early in future elections. I think it's very sensible and it makes voting more accessible to everyone. I voted at City Hall in Stanton. It was easy and quick. I want to thank all the people who worked during the early voting. They were professional, courteous, and efficient, and they deserve high praise. So thank you to everyone in the elections office. And although I didn't vote at the polls on election day as I have in past years. I also want to thank all the poll workers who did their job in the middle of this pandemic. This is a very difficult time. You are truly essential workers and we owe you all our gratitude. Thank you. Thank you. Next caller. There are no other callers, Madam Mayor. Oh, okay. Uh, well, with that, uh, we need to go into a closed meeting, so I'll entertain a motion. Madam Mayor. Vice Mayor Robertson. I move to enter a closed meeting for discussion of possible acquisition of real property within the city, where discussion in an open meeting would adversely affect the public body's bargaining position or negotiating strategy. Two, discussion of possible disposition of publicly held real property of Stanton Crossing, where discussion in an open meeting would adversely affect the public body's bargaining position or negotiating strategy. Pursuant to Virginia Code Section 2.2-3711A3, also number three, cons consultation and discussion with legal counsel requiring the provision of legal advice by such counsel regarding the possible acquisition and or disposition of real property pursuant to Virginia Code Section 2.2-3711A8 
And number four, discussion concerning a prospective business or industry where no previous announcement actually has been made of the businesses or industry's interest in locating its facilities in the city pursuant to Virginia Code 2.2-3711A5. <laughs> that deserved that was pretty good news. Yeah, that was perfectly timing. All right, so we have a motion on the floor. Is there a second? A second. Madam Mayor, I second. Um, Councilman Claffey is second. Any further discussion? Ms. Smith, please call the roll. Vice Mayor Robertson? Aye. Ms. Mead? Aye. Mr. Holmes? Aye. Mr. Claffey? Aye. Ms. Dull? Aye. Mayor Oaks? Aye. Ms. Darby? Aye. Motion carries. All right. Thank you. I move that council reconvene in an open meeting and certify to the best of each member's knowledge that only lawful exempt public business matters were discussed and only public business matters as identified in the closed meeting motion were heard, discussed, or considered in the meeting. All right, there's a motion on the floor. Is there a second? Second. All right, we have a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, Ms. Smith, please call the roll. Mr. Claffey. Aye. Ms. Mead. Aye. Mr. Holmes. Aye. Vice Mayor Robertson. Aye. Mayor Oaks. Aye. Ms. Darby. Aye. Ms. Dull. Aye. Motion carries. All right. With that, we are adjourned.